Hello folks, it's End Commander, and let's see if we can get streaming working. Alright, uh, I'm running on one monitor, which is unusual for me, so it's a little bit of a learning experience because the second monitor is... And I got turned down the mic volume, I'm sorry. I'm running on one monitor since the second one is going to be used for the ThinkPad a little later in the stream. And behind me, you can see the remnants or the remains of the equipment that has displeased me and will probably be used. Um, showing at a later point, just to give you an idea, those who see my community page know what that is the remains of. And it's the fate of any electronics that has displeased me. So, let's get a little context. This is the this is the last Linux OS you will ever need to buy. Debian Linux, the powerful 32-bit OS, and it's really hard to figure out which way I have to move my hand. And it is the biggest pile of something. Um, for those who haven't seen it, I did a video on this particular box set of Linux, and it was um, it was garbage. I am trying to figure out better ways to put it. So I figured. Since people enjoy watching my pain and suffering, we should enjoy it together. We should open this turd, take a big, big whiff of the best parts of the late 90s, and install it on this ThinkPad 380D, which is down there. You won't see the ThinkPad during this video for the most part um, because I will be typing on it and the camera will be pointed at the external monitor. But that just means X is going to go completely kaput. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. I think my stream music just cut out. This is off to a great start. So I'm going to put the camera facing the desk and we... All right, and chat, oh wow, sorry, that is that is way overexposed. Okay, there is a, there is an advanced option. Right. There is an advanced option to turn down the exposure level. There we go, exposure lock is off. And the desk is of course slightly still damp. So let's take a little look inside the box. And let me make sure I have the chat still up. So, Anyway, chat, please let me know if you can't hear me or if the music uh, is uh, too loud. Uh, and yes, it does have the nub mouse or whatever euphemism you want to use for the track point. So, inside the box, we have, we have, oh, come on. Out. We have another box. We have the Debian bumper sticker. We have the one CD. We have a copy of Myth 2, uh, a demo version. I didn't actually try this, so I'm kind of curious to see if this will work. This was originally on the shrink wrap on the front of the box. Um, and then there is not only an included O'Reilly manual, there's a second quick start manual. And let me just tell you that these manuals are completely useless. And there's actually a third manual on the on the CD. And this CD box set was made by VA Linux and SGI. So the um, yeah, so at the time SGI was migrating away from IREX towards Linux. And uh, let's see here. Turn the gain up. I can turn the gain up. My voice is my passport. Verify me. Yeah. The mic is on a boom, so when I have to lean over to the other desk, it's a little bit hard because I'm kind of contorting myself. Um, if it's if the audio goes weird, just let me know. So, yeah. So, this box set was a collaborative effort. Let me take the CD out. Um... See, collaborative effort between SGI, O'Reilly, and VA Linux on the bottom. Now, this is Debian 2.1 uh, for i386. It's supposed to be a two CD set. 
They only gave you the first CD. Music is pretty loud. I can do that. I can fix that. Okay. All right. Bacon admin, I uh, I fixed the uh, music. Like I said, I'm still we're still getting the kinks out of the stream. That's the easiest way to put it. And <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this was released 1990, uh, 1999. Um, it has a Linux 2.2 .2 kernel, and yeah, it's kind of an abomination. So, um, do we want to just throw it in and get going? Or should I read some passages from the included Learning Debian uh, book? Because, um, oh boy, this book is interesting. And when I say interesting, I mean horrifying. So, um, yes, the camera, I, I turned off auto exposure. So, um, when I pointed it at the desk, which is why, let me relock it. That's why it's being stupid. <sighs> yeah. Fortunately, the camera has a remote control, so I don't have to fuddle. The box is haunted with the ghost of disgruntled Linux programming. Okay, all right. You know, I, I, I don't think I can do a better prelude than that. So let's, so let's get this. So it's, it's everyone's favorite flat screen. Okay, point it at there. Lock the camera, and then let me fix the exposure levels. I had this all set, and then I realized, oh wait, I'm going to have to do a unboxing. So right now, all right. So you know what, we're just gonna turn the power on. And then while that boots up, and you can see just the edge of the ThinkPad, hey look, it's an IBM logo. I have 48 megabytes of memory and one of the world's cruddiest BIOSes on this machine. So if you watch my videos, this, holy cow, that color, I just realized how off the color is. That's, uh, we can do a bit better than that. Exposure lock. Okay. So before I started the stream up, I actually ran scan disk and defragment, uh, defrag on the hard drive because you need to for what we're going to be trying to do uh, later today. Or, yeah, I guess it is today. I'm used to streaming at night. So this is a little different. Let's see here. Um, stream, okay, I'm getting a bitrate warning from YouTube, but otherwise it seems to be okay. All right, so, yeah. the um, This book is not very well written. Um, the installation instructions is about the first 50 pages and they contradict the on-screen instructions and are incorrect in places. So the ThinkPad's still booting up. I, it probably is running slow because I don't have, hold on. I'm sorry, I, I, I always have to stop for that noise. So um, yeah, so since it is partitioning time or it will be partitioning time, uh, let's talk about what we've got here. So obviously we've got a CD-ROM drive. We've got um, a 1.3 gigabyte hard drive. This is actually the original hard drive that was in here. Um, if I really, really wanted to hate myself, we could compress the hard drive. <laughs> um, so the password for Windows 95 is actually NT domain login. Um, and it really just saves that password and regurgitates it as needed. It's not really used for anything beyond that. Um, so, well, I mean, I used that login prompt with Exchange. Remember, this is from when I did the Jornada um, login. So you actually do have to enter a username and password or it will not let you log into Exchange. Uh, so there was, in fact, a thing. So, ah, uh, modern release starting. So... I say let's put the disk in and take a look. So uh, I'm also going to note that the CD-ROM drive on this ThinkPad is a little dodgy. I actually have replaced it, but the replacement went from completely dead to mostly dead, which is just slightly alive. I don't, I don't know, actually know if there's an auto run on this desk. Okay, so there isn't an auto run, 
But we can basically see the, of course, Windows Manager is, I want to use one window. I, this, is, this is the past, I guess. So you can basically see you have all the binary files, we have all the debs, yada, yada, yada. Amazingly, Windows is not having a heart attack with these long file names, although I guess it's just standard ISO 9660. So um, <laughs> don't compress the hard drive. <laughs> so I actually did think about doing Debian 1.3, but I've already subjected this poor ThinkPad to um, soft landing Linux, and I installed it. It does it um, to answer Lone Tech. It does in fact have a load lin. Uh, if we go into install, yeah, there's a boot dot bat. You have to be in MS DOS mode for it to work. Uh, but that is how we're going to. But that's. We're getting ahead of ourselves because we are going to try, and I'm going to emphasize the word here, we are going to try and do non-destructive partitioning. And um, Dominic, uh, Dominic Haynes, when this, distrib when this release of Debian was new, EXT2 was still new. So, yeah. So, yeah, I am definitely not going to compress the hard drive. So, I think... The correct thing to do, uh, I think the correct thing to do, uh, why did my stream just glitch out? Hold on. Hold on. My admin panel just glitched. I don't even know if the stream is up. Studio dashboard. Yeah, I just, okay, no, apparently I am still live. I'm sorry. All right. So anyway, um, we need to reboot into DOS mode. Ta-da! All right, and hopefully the camera decides it's going to behave. So I already noticed a problem, and that was not the problem I was expecting to have. I don't have a CD-ROM driver. Ah, oh, crud. Uh, I should please tell me I have Oak CD on here. CD. I don't think I do. Yeah, I probably don't. Because I installed this with the network adapter. I don't have Oak CD on here. I'm going to have to boot back in the windows. God damn it. Okay, hold on. I got to get the network card out because I have to install the CD-ROM driver. This is off to a great start. <laughs> I didn't, we didn't even, <laughs> we didn't even manage to get around the first corner. Nope. Instead, I, I don't know. And I don't know why it's running so slowly. It, it's not normally this lethargic of a system. So let's, so I've got the network card right here. So let me plop this in. So I can get Oak CD-ROM. I thought 95 would install a blasted CD-ROM driver for MS-DOS mode. Like, I, I am surprised that's a separate thing. Let's see here. I could put the boot image on the... Um, uh, I could put the boot image on the um, file system. Sorry. Every time I start up, I have to listen to that. Uh, let's see here. So if I just go to Network Neighborhood, it should. I, I, I'm I really hoping it should. It should see App Solution, which is my desktop. And is it me or is the colors really off here? So ThinkPad. Okay, so it does. Add, okay, it does see it. Let me. Let me copy Oak CD, CD-ROM there so I can actually load up a CD-ROM device. So I'm currently, let's see here, where, I know I have Oak CD somewhere. Okay, there we go. So if I put that, let's see your ThinkPad stuff, there. Yeah, so somehow I have working networking, but I don't have, working CD-ROM because of course I do. All right, there we go. Oak CD-ROM. All 
Cool. All right. Um, I want to say when Windows, it's, God, it's been so long. I want to say when you're using DAWs mode, it, I don't remember. Let's see here, I think, I legitimately don't remember if this is how you have to do it for DAWs mode because uh, it's Windows 95 and, uh, okay, it was a long time ago. We, there, there, there might be some tech, uh, there might be some pain. Okay, yeah, so it did not load that one. It loaded the Crystalware audio, but of course it doesn't actually load what I need it to load. Let's see here. Yeah, so now there's Oak CD. See, config DAWs would be the original uh, DAWs boot sector that was on there. I just reboot and F8 it. Does it give? Will it give me the option for what I need? Because this is going well. All right. Uh, go to go to command prompt. Hey, there it goes. It sees the CD-ROM drive. MSCDX D one two three four five six seven eight. Hey, look, we have a CD-ROM. Okay, progress. We we've we have gone we've gone past the first hurdle. We um we have managed to get onto the CD-ROM. So I actually want to do non-destructive install, um, mostly because it's a bad idea, and I like bad ideas. So um, there's two ways we can do this, and I'll let chat decide. I'll wait for us to catch up. There is the legacy FIPS utility, um, which basically is the old school way of doing disk partitioning and basically was what we used before we had parted. Or I've got a copy of Partition Magic, uh, or at least I've got the boot disks for it, which can also be used to non-destructively resize Win32 partitions. So either can be interesting. Um, I'm open to suggestions on how to do this. I mean, the other option is we completely obliterate the hard drive. Um, let me see here. How much space do I have left? I believe, yeah, we've got 800, 900 megabytes free. I'll leave 100 left for Windows, give the rest to Linux. So, yeah. Oh, wow, so, from Siberia. That's amazing. That that is really impressive. I guess we are going to probably be doing FIPS for um, maximum pain. So Mia, to answer your question, uh, I found this on eBay for five dollars, um, and yeah, it it's been the gift that keeps on giving. I should probably turn the camera towards me because I'm just kind of staring out in the space and thinking about this horror, 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 horror thing. Yeah, okay, I have this distinct feeling we're going to be fipsing. So I'm going to give chat another moment to catch up here. And then um, whichever way is most likely to cause issues. Okay, I guess fips wins. Um, oh, and that's my foot deciding. You know, it, it's funny. We say, which one is most likely to cause issues? And then my foot suddenly cramps. So, uh, hold on. I needed to turn the audio up slightly just so I could hear it. But um, I like how it says, do not use FIPS in a multitasking environment like Windows, OS2, DeskView, Novell Task Manager, or the Linux DAWs emulator. There's a lot to take in here. Like, a lot to take in here. Uh, I, I, I don't know. So... All right, anyway, YOLO. So with FIPS, the way this works is it edits the master boot record um, partition table. So it's gonna do a whole bunch of checks and check if everything's good. Uh, I do actually, oh frig, I, should, I need a floppy disk for this. I do actually, no, 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 control C, control C, control C. Because if FIPS goes wrong, I'm going to have to restore a backup of the boot sector. I need, I need a disk to, to write a backup. I don't know what's on this desk. 
All right, let's see what's on this desk. Uh, oh wow, I actually know what's on this disk. This is the network driver for the Ethernet. I can actually erase this. I have a backup of this disk. So, yeah. Okay, quick format, MBR backup. Really hope you don't need it, but you know, the time you, the, the one time you need a backup is the time you don't have it. So, okay. Pain and suffering. Well, there's multiple ways to have pain and suffering. Let's Let's be honest. You know, I could have pain and suffering with FIPS, pain and suffering without FIPS. We haven't even gone to installing Linux. We haven't even booted Linux. We are still at the, um, we are still at the trying to figure out uh, how to install Linux. And this is a FAT32 system because this is Windows 95 OSR2. So it's basically Windows 98 without active desktop. So I do want to make a backup. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, this, it does need to be a billable disk, doesn't it? Um, transfer files to the system. Uh, God, shows, uh, this used to be a rite of passage. Funk, funk, funk goes the files, the floppy disk. Yeah, so basically if FIPS goes wrong, I can use this disk to put the, the file system back to the way it was. Okay, system transferred. All right, so let's try this. So it's gonna do all the sanity checks. I wanna make a backup. I have a bootable disk. Okay, so let's see here. So how big do I want? So we'll make the old partition 600. Uh, it doesn't leave a lot of space for Linux. Yeah, I, I remember this. You're limited to the uh, the cylinder boundary. So, uh, yeah, so we'll leave 572 for Windows 95, 800 for Linux. And that's basically the entire hard drive. So, okay. All right. So now it shows the modified partition table. Um, yeah, no, we're going to continue. I want to write to disk. Memory <laughs> repartitioning complete by memory allocation error can't load command and system halted. Um, when chat catches up to this, uh, can I get some F's? <sighs> okay, all right. Eject and reboot. Let's see if we have a working system. The thing is, it probably will boot. Okay, starting Windows 95. Well, that's a promising sign. The question is, is what's the condition of the hard drive once it boots up? So, <laughs> I got a bunch of Fs and one G. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, we're, we're currently seeing, it, it sounds like it's still trying to boot. So let's see if it actually worked despite failing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, we actually booted. We actually made it back into Windows. So, it's not complete failure. Let's see if that partition change actually stuck. Hey, look, it actually did. So, I've got 70 megabytes of free space on drive C. And I have an unformatted D partition. So, okay, I'm calling that a win. I am, in fact, calling that a win. Uh, it didn't report failure. So, yeah, we uh, it actually managed it. So, with FIPS, what I remember is the correct thing to do is go into FDisk and delete the partition. here let it boot up it's fine so yeah so we go into f disk we enable large disk support and yeah see that's that's the problem with using fips is it made both partitions type primary daws this thinkpad doesn't have a problem with it but i know some bioses will actually throw a fit about that so i gotta tell it to delete partition two it's got no label 
and then partition deleted. Okay, so and then that should leave a large chunk of free space. And then we can uh, do a reboot. And now we are ready to install. Yeah. So. So I, I it is possible that running, you you had to use a boot flop, leave FIPS, but I don't ever remember doing that back in the day. And I used to install Linux pretty regularly. So boot. So at this point, we don't actually need a boot. This ThinkPad can't boot from CD-ROM. Uh, it's BIOS just isn't able to, even though the um, El Torito boot extensions are um, not that old. So we just do boot and that runs load Lin, And now we just need to let it boot up and I need a drink. Okay, welcome to Boot Floppies, because that is what this installer is called. This is the predecessor to Debian Installer. So, oh boy. Oh boy. Um, uh, at Venus, but um, this ThinkPad doesn't have UEFI. It, it doesn't even have, it doesn't even have a complete BIOS implementation. It has magic. So we have a color display, and we can see that the boot floppy, and I'm, yes, I'm going to give the air quotes there, was built on 1999-09-08. Um, and then, yep, so far so good. So configure the keyboard. We have a QWERTY keyboard. We need to partition the hard drive, and we can see we have a bunch of free space. So with these versions of Linux, the traditional way to do this is you make a root partition and a swap partition. So um, I need to do some math here because math is hard. The rule is the amount of RAM you have times two. Uh, so 96 megabytes, so, 80, so 822 minus 96. So I wanna make a 728 megabyte root partition at the beginning. Um, and then I need to make a new partition, primary, uh, did my math go off? Yeah, wait a minute, no, hold on. Apparently, apparently I can't math. Oh, it's going around to the nearest cylinder. That's the problem. It's going around to the nearest cylinder and have some indigestion. In so I guess we're just going to go with that. It should be more than enough disk space. Uh, and then I'm just going to give all that. So the other thing, the next thing you have to do is you have to go to the type field and you have to switch the type uh, to Linux swap. So let me see here. So it's 82. So that gives us a, our root partition. It gives us our, our swap partition. Now, if I really, really wanted to make myself suffer because suffering is always an option i could do more than one partition for the linux root file system but i didn't even do that back in the day so and quite frankly we are um <clears throat> we're kind of tempting fate as is so um yeah so that's right um advanus this thinkpad's from 1997 so yeah all right, so anyway, we are going to write the partition table to disk. Now, there's about a 50-50 chance that Linux throws a fit and I have to reboot. So quit. Okay, it sees the swap partition. Uh, I don't need to do a bad block scan. And then initialize the Linux partition. You don't need to do a bad block scan. And then we'll just let format. It's amazing, there's not even a choice of file system because the choices at this point were the Minix file system and ext2. So, okay, uh, we can mount and then we can install operating system and kernel. And then this was something I really complained about during the video and it, it just, just annoys me. So the installer doesn't know where it is. Um, that's understandable for the kernel. So we are installing from CD-ROM 
And then you get this wonderfully nonsense prompt where you have to know the um, IDE position. On most computers, it's usually, I've seen it, either as the second drive on the primary or the first drive on the secondary. But f the actual instruction book says, just try every one until you find it. And then there were so many ways this could go wrong. It's not even, um, even not funny. So, yeah, uh, I believe on this ThinkPad, it is the second drive on the primary controller. Okay, I just heard the CD-ROM spin up, so I picked, I, I chose wisely. Yeah, so Debian, um, I'm gonna let install all. So this stage of the Debian installation is quite a bit different than modern ones. It's going to, let's see here, I'm going to let it install driver modules, finished, uh, all right. What what host name should I give it? I'm just going to call it ThinkPad. But chat, give me your name ideas of what host name this machine should be because I'll change it after installation. Um, we are connected to a network, but I'm not going to use it right now because it won't work. All right, install the base system. And then all I get to do is kick back and listen to the CD-ROM go burr. Yeah, you know how many questions I've been answering just to get this far? And we haven't even started the install process proper. Yeah. Um, so, Mitchell, um, just to answer your thing, I did a video on Soft Landing Linux. Soft Landing Linux is simpler than this. Like, it's a lot simpler. I wrote a kernel patch to make Soft Landing work on this ThinkPad. And it was simpler than this. And just to show that I am, in fact, in doing this on the ThinkPad. Let me make sure the camera is actually showing it. There's the ThinkPad right there. So I am, in fact, doing this on real hardware. Okay, so configure the base system. Um, I'm in EST. Oh, God, I remember this question. Unix system clocks are generally set to GMT and use time zone files to convert values to local time. Uh, I actually want to see if I can get dual booting actually working. So I want to leave the clock set to local time. So that is close to the actual time. So the hardware clock is not set. We want to make Linux directly bootable from the hard drive. So I want to install an MBR. Boot Debian by default. Um, I'm just going YOLO. I'm not going to make a boot floppy. Reboot the system. Chat, do you want to um, uh, take odds on us actually rebooting? So, um, and uh, Dominic, to answer your question, I run um, I run Ubuntu on my main desktop. Um, that's more out of inertia and the fact that I used to work for Ubuntu's corporate overlords than anything, you know, any thing else but Ubuntu manages to annoy me the least out of everything so let's uh let's go for it okay uh no I'm using cinnamon um I'm not using gnome so okay we are rebooting we are rebooting oh there's the lilo prompt loading Linux I just noticed something um, well, let's let it get, let's let it come up all the way. The kernel that was installed as part of the base system was built on a system called crash landing, but I'm going to let, I'm going to actually let this boot up all the way before I do anything. So it sees the serial ports It actually seeing the IRDA port, uh, which is serial, which is com zero on this thing pad. I have never tried to get IRDA working under Linux. And this just seems like a bad idea. I have to try realistic. So the the ThinkPad has a hold on it's making the beepy noises. So this ThinkPad's a uh, 150 megahertz Pentium. In theory, most modern versions of Linux will not run. Most need a Pentium Pro. In theory, I could probably get Gentoo. I might even be able to recompile Ubuntu. The absolute baseline minimum for Linux is a 486. So. Um, anyway, the prompt here is this giant 
wall of text is just asking me to set a root password. So we're going to set the most secure password in the world. Oh, yes. Um, minimum of five characters, maximum of eight, because Linux at this point still used crypt. You'll also notice that there is no devconf. Um, it's all these text prompts. So I will create a normal user account. And, you know, we're going to go with n commander just because that's who I am when I'm on stream. So we're also going to go with the most secure password known to mankind. Uh, let's see here. Information is correct. Uh, we can install shadow passwords because we are not going to do NIS because I am not, I'm not actually that crazy. I mean, we could do NIS, but in, I would need Solaris. I would have to, I would have to install Solaris if I was to do NIS properly. And is it me or is the stream resolution very low? No. Okay. It's just me watching my, I'm guessing the admin council uh, just lowers the stream resolution. So, um, okay. Just making sure everything's going. So we're going to install shadow passwords. Um, we do actually need PCM CIA. Uh, I have never actually figured out how to reinstall PCM CIA. If you say no to this question, uh, because it's not obvious. Um, and now it's asking it's, um, <laughs> I'm apparently causing PTSD in my, um, in my, in my chat. I, I feel bad. Um, there is hope. There is help. Um, so I would love to have a PBX. I would love to have an actual modem because I'm pretty sure all of you would enjoy watching me suffer trying to get dial up working on the sync pad as it, as I spoiler alert, getting ethernet working is not trivial. Um, but I don't have a modem. I don't have anything else. So, but, um, anyone who's run Debian, um, brace yourselves because this is going to hurt. Well, sorry. It was the next step. Um, but actually I want you all to look at the screen. I want you to look at this wonderful, wonderful UI and tell me what the correct option is. You know, you, you have this list of package profiles. You could be an admin. You could have a basic standalone system, which is 28 megabytes, which tell you how little is actually installed. You have two different development options. You have dial up, which is the not so obvious correct answer. And then you have a bunch of server stuff. You have standard, you have workstation scientific. <laughs> oh man. Remember, remember when distrib, you know, people complain that GNOME removed all the options, but I don't really miss this. I legitimately do not miss this. So yeah, um, we're going to hit dial up. So this is the part. This is the part. Uh, as a note to chat, I am lagging. I think I've got about 40 seconds of stream lag. So just keep that in mind. I don't, last time I streamed on YouTube, the stream lag was not that bad, but just keep that in mind. So Debian users of old, I'm sorry. It's deselect time. It is deselect time. And uh, there is no install all the things thing. So here, this is where the manual, if we were following the manual, and if I wasn't a Debian developer, tells you to do something completely different than what the instructions say. You need to hit access here. You have to hit multi CD-ROM, and then deselect can auto detect the CD-ROM for you. And then you just follow the prompts. It sees that this is a Slink CD. I don't have a non-free CD, although I kind of wish I did. I don't have a non-US CD. I don't have a local CD. Okay, it's going to spin for a while. I'm going to update the package set. So that's going to go. And we're going to get to the first stage. Okay, so if I want to customize the system further, like if I really want to install all the things, this is where you install all the things. And yeah, I mean, look, you can get, you can choose four, five different versions of um, the Linux kernel if you so choose. Uh, we will be back in deselect, but yeah. All right, screw it. We are just going to hit install. And, and that wonderful sound, I don't know if the mic is picking up, is the CD-ROM going brrrr. <sighs> So 
There's nothing bad. So this is going to run for about 20 minutes. So I'm just going to sit with chat. Um, so J Javar, in theory, I could... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, the CD-ROM drive just crapped out on me. Power on, reset, or bus device reset has occurred. I've had this happen before. I think there's a capacitor in the CD-ROM drive that is on the very verge of saying goodbye. And I think it just said goodbye on me on stream. All right. Control C, Control C. Yeah, it's trying to spin up and it's failing. All right, let's let's switch to another V terminal and see if we can salvage this. <sighs> All right, so you do we have is the CD-ROM mounted? CD-ROM is not mounted, so let me see if I can mount it. Okay, so it's only this one CD that it sometimes gives me issues in it with. So let me unmount it because now the the drive is spun up. Maybe it will actually install. It's trying. Oh, it's thinking about it. It is thinking really hard. Um, so Ivanis, this ThinkPad doesn't support Pixie. There's no support. It does support RPL over Token Ring. But yeah, okay, it's not having it. It's really, really trying. Ah, crad. Okay. So, all right. Um, control C. Control C. Abo abandon ship. Abandon ship. Let's see here. Uh, I got to tell it to... I need to kill D pack. Uh, kill 9385. Or did it... Yeah, it did on its own. Yeah, so installation script returned error. So, crud. Okay, so the CD-ROM drive has decided that... Nope. Let me eject the disk. Put it back in, and we'll give it one more go. This is not a problem with Debian. This is a problem that the CD-ROM drive on this ThinkPad is a little flaky. It, well, it, actually, it could be a problem with Debian, or more specifically, it could be a problem with the, this version of the Linux kernel. Because it doesn't do this under 95, but it has had trouble with other CD-ROMs. Okay, all right. I think it's power cycle time. So, halt. Now, what I don't know, I legitimately don't know what's going to happen. Because I've... Um, the last time this happened to me during was when I was recording this video, and I just wiped the hard drive and reinstalled. So I don't know if we're going to get brought back to deb deselect or if we're going to have to manually try and recover the install. So um, we've or we've already gone to YOLO installation steps. This is not a burnt CD um, rouge. This is actually a pressed CD. Um, we. Let me do a full shutdown and restart and then see if it'll actually play ball. This is an eight. All right, turn it off. Three, two, one. If we have to get networking going, we will get networking going. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with the disk. It reads fine in other systems. It's, we're going to try this one more time. So, and just as a note, if I break into the Lilo prompt, you notice that Windows is currently MIA. Just keep that in mind. So I suspect this is going to drop me to a login prompt. I suspect. I don't know for sure. Because I... Let's see here. So let's see what it does once it boots up. So it's entering run level 2. It sees PCM CIA. Yeah. Okay. So it took me to a login prompt. So root password... It should retain my selection, so I should just be able to hit install. I hear the drive spinning up. All right. It's trying. Yeah, I could do networking. Um, okay, all right. So I guess that's... 
what the heck? I have installed from the, I installed from this CD on this ThinkPad multiple times. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have just turned it off there. It's going to bitch at me now. Uh, crud. Okay, this is going well. This is going well. All right, let me take the CD out. Let's take a look. I mean, there are a few minor scratches on the CD, but that's the way it came. So we can try and install from the network. Um, I do have a backup of the CD. I can burn a replacement. But, all right, let's see if we've got enough of the system to actually bring the network up and do the installation from network. I can hear it spinning. I don't understand why it's doing this to me. Okay. Yeah, I've, the, there is a pretty non-zero chance that the CD-ROM drive has completely packed up. I mean, we got for the first part of the install. But apparently... Hmm... All right, let, all right, so let's see if we can actually bring, so I do, so I wasn't going to show this until later. So it's not, I do have a PCM CIA network card installed. Let me show the camera at it. If you uh, see here, I do actually have one installed. The problem is, and you'll see this if we try and configure it. Uh, 100, netmask, 255252520. Um, you get operation not supported by device, and you get these really, really confusing errors. Um, the problem here is I could walk you through the entire debugging process, but I kind of want to install the system. If we go to card control uh, status, you can see that – okay, that's not the right one. Is it card control ident? Okay, you can see that it sees that it's a Kingston N uh, K N E P C two, and if we go to the P C M database, which is here. Oh, great! I don't I don't have Nano. Uh, do I have Vi? I do have Vi. So if I go K E two, you actually see that this card is supported. It's listed right here, but it's supposed to be using the P C Net C S driver. And yes, I, I have run into this problem before. So let, let's pause it. If you read the actual card control manual page, which of course is installed, so you're just gonna have to take my word for this. There is a status config file. Is it in lib? Might be in cache. It's called stab and it's cat run stab. Yeah, so you can see run um, the stab file shows you what drivers it is. So you notice that this said if I run card control ident, it says that this is a Kingston card. The stab file says it's a Y a Wisecom fast Ethernet, and the reason for this is because the card entry, the card database shipped by Debian is messed up. If we look, oh. Ah, uh, frig. Okay, hold on. If we look for this Wisecom card that's here, you see that this has a manufacturing ID set on it. And as it turns out, my specific PCMCIA card has the same manufacturing ID. So the whole thing basically goes up in flames. So the solution to actually getting a working network adapter here is to comment out this driver entry write it, reboot, let it reboot. Now I'm going to note that this is a 10 megabit PCM CIA card, so this is not going to be particularly fast, uh, even if we get it working. So let's let it do the reboot. I really, really wish I knew what was wrong with the CD-ROM drive. We're going to do some tests on the CD-ROM drive. I actually, I'm going to try updating the kernel um first so let's see here lilo let it boot okay so it's booting up it's booting up it's booting up 
and then we should be able to get enough of the system up and running that I can run deselect and we won't have to use the CD-ROM. But I don't know what's wrong with the CD-ROM. There, there shouldn't be anything wrong with the CD-ROM is actually what I'm seeing. So if we do IF config. I'm just going to note I don't have a DHCP client. A DHCP client. I guess that's understandable because basically we've got nothing. Uh, zero. Uh, inet zero and six zero one zero zero net mask two five five two five five zero. Okay, can I ping my router? I can ping my router. So route add default gateway one two six zero zero one. All right, can it talk to Google? It can talk to Google. Okay, and now I just have to add the name server. Uh, one two six zero oh one. Hey, look! It can actually now resolve Google. All right, progress. So now we can go to deselect. We go to access methods, and then we need to go to apt acquisition. Um. Oh, actually, no, that's not what we want to do. So we actually want to go to act sources lists. So. These are set to how Debian would have been configured um, 20 years ago. But as it turns out, Debian actually kept their old archives available. If I change this to... If I, wasn't, I'm, I may have to check this on the other computer. I believe if I set this to archive... archive.debian.org.debian. I have to tell it we're on Slink instead of Stable. Slink. Um, I actually, I am going to have to check this on the other computer because I don't remember where the non-US archive lives. It's not in the same place. Oh, no, okay. Apparently it is in the same place. Never mind. So we set... So I'll explain what non-US is once we get the install going. Um, all right. Let's, let's see here. Apt get update. Uh, couldn't resolve that, but that's fine. That is fine. I something with this terminal is iffy. Oh right, because this is probably a stripped down VI. It's not the full one. All right, let's see if I can do an app get upgrade now or update. Okay, it's reading. It's reading a new database file in. Okay, so I'm taking the CD out. So, CD is currently out of the ThinkPad. I'm just pulling the chat back up because... All right, so ThinkPad, CD is out. So now if I go to deselect and I go to install, no medium found. Uh, no medium found. Okay, it's... I got to tell it to just use apt. I don't want to change. Because in this point in Debian's life cycle, deselect and apt were two completely different mechanisms. Okay, so it now needs to download 204 three megabytes of archive. See, what concerns me here is it's going to run out of disk space. And the reason I'm concerned about this is because normally it would just install right off the... How much disk space do we have to work with? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to run out of disk space if I do this. You know what? Let's try it. Let's see how far we get. I'm not super optimistic about this. Okay, it's saying it's going to take 25 minutes to download everything it needs. This is fine. We're okay. So, yeah. So I'm sorry I haven't been paying attention to chat all that much. Um, I really don't know what's wrong with that CD. I, you know, while this is going, because this is going to go for the next 25 minutes, let's see if we can read the CD in my desktop. So let me go on OBS. We're going to let that run. 
Um, and I'll put that. I'll keep the Debian install going in the corner. We're probably going to have to handhold it because it's going to run out of disk space. But. So let's. I just realized you guys are probably watching me watch myself watch the stream. So let's let's bring the CD back up. Um, it's currently trying to spin up in the drive, and like I said, I'm down to one monitor, so just bear with me. I, 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 okay, so if we go here, okay, you know you're probably right. Actually, you know that's a really smart thing to do. I hold on, I'm going to Control C this. I'm going to control C the ThinkPad. Um, okay, let me. Yeah, let's do control C. You know, because what we can do is we can put the CD over NFS. It, it won't actually be all that much faster, but we can act as though the CDs. That is not the what I want to be playing. That's not what I want to be trying to do. Uh, OBS, behave. Okay, full screen. No. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, no, I need to be on the other one. So we... Actually, do I even have any NFS? Cat proc file systems. I don't even think I have NFS support now that I think about it. But I could install it. NFS server. I don't even know if this current... Uh, do we have a config file for this kernel? I don't think we do. Did this... Proc. Yeah. I have Ubuntu set up to work with NFS2 exports. All right, let me see if I can mount it. MP serve. Uh, the desktop is what? Okay. All right, I don't, I, this is not a folder I was, I normally use with this thing pad. Okay, desktop is 0170, serve LP4 E6 mount. Okay, so I guess it can. I guess I can use NFS. Let me get the CD. Let me get the CD in a mount point, and then we'll we'll go from there. Uh, CD. Let's go back to full screen here. So the CD is in media MCAS the vol Debian CD here. Um, let's make a new folder for it. Reset. Uh, DCD, Debian CD. Nope, wrong folder. Wrong folder. MCAST of all, Debian. Okay. Alright, let's let it copy the entire CD to the hard drive. Because this will also show there's an actual problem with the CD. See that? There shouldn't be, but if the desktop errors out, then I know the CD has gone completely kaput. So, yeah. So, but yeah, at least now we know that we uh, NFS is in fact working. This is fine. Everything is fine. This is no, nothing. Nothing is on fire. That nothing is on fire that shouldn't be on fire. So, okay. Because I believe then I can just point this at look. I just noticed that this says EGCS. That's um. That's interesting. I don't know if you can hear it, but the CD-ROM drive is making interesting noises. So yeah, All right. Yeah, like I said, I'm all, I'm down to a single screen for this stream, so. Proving to be an interesting experience. Well, I tried mounting the actual disk, but every time I try to use the actual disk under Debian, it it's having indigestion. I will try the disk one more time if you guys want. Um, 
I'll, this is plan B. This is mostly just seeing if the drive is working. Um, it was probably Debian 2.2. Um, it was pretty close to this one, but it wasn't on Intel. It was on PowerPC um, because I used to be a Mac user. I know, I know, horror. Um, if, um, if you were a Mac user, you were using PowerPC Linux and your two choices were Debian and Yellow Dog Linux or just dealing with Mac OS 9. Uh, the stream will automatically be saved and posted as a video to my channel when it when I take the stream offline. So if you go offline, you'll be able to catch it later. So yeah, so the CD-ROM is reading just fine in the desktop. Like if we pull up uh, another terminal, yeah, it's reading just fine. Wow, it's a Juliet <laughs> Microsoft Juliet Level One. That that be uh, that be slightly old school, Mon. So, out of curiosity, where is okay? There we go. That brings the Droid Cam back, sort of. Why? Why is this having? Well, it, it <sighs> this is technical issues day. Um, have you made any videos on setting up Windows NT as a domain or Exchange Setup? I did talk about Exchange Setup in the most recent um, video I did because I set up Exchange for the Dronada, but it wasn't the focus of that video. So, okay, so the disk read just fine under Debian. And just to prove that there is, it's the ThinkPad and not the actual disk. I'm actually just going to read this out to an ISO real quick. Yeah, so I hear it spinning. I've already done this. I already have a backup copy of this desk. If I go here, yeah, there it is, Debian. Yeah, so this is the backup copy I made of this disk when I originally got it a few months ago. So this is why I think it's the ThinkPad saying, um, the ThinkPad CD-ROM saying it's kaput. Um, but you know the pro that's the problem of old CD-ROM drives. When I first got this ThinkPad, it's CD-ROM um, drive. I've let me rephrase that. I've owned this ThinkPad for most of its life, but it was at my mom's for a long time, and it was actually in the trash, and I saved it from being thrown out. Um, it all worked except the original CD-ROM drive was dead. So I replaced the original CD-ROM with a new old stock one, which works, but little temperamental, but. I almost wonder if it's um, okay. Yeah, I just realized I'm, I'm watching the stream in the stream, so it is possible the drive doesn't like the format. I mean, we we could try burning the ISO to a CDRW and seeing if it will actually work. You know, that's not even that's not even the worst idea I've had today. Let me see. Here. I think I've got some blanks. There's CDRWs, but you know what? We're going to we're going to try this. We are going to, in fact, try this. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we've got a capacitor. ThinkPad is um, Lone Tech. This was working with this CD and this CD-ROM drive three months ago. Nothing has changed, but I'm pretty sure there's a capacitor is on its last leg in the CD unit. It or it's. Um, or it's something else. But I've got, uh, I'm holding it up to the camera. I've got a blank CDRW right here. So, because this is gonna be faster than 10 meg megabit networking. Okay, eject the disk. Blank is going in. I was not expecting to do this today. CD record temp CD ROM. Okay, three, two, one, zero. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever burned a CD in this drive before. This is this is newfound land here. So and I just realized it's burning at 4x speed. We're gonna be here for a bit. 
So, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't use the CD-ROM drive on this ThinkPad very often. Like, last time I reinstalled Windows 95 off of it, I did it from the network. I have you recently reinstalled NT on it, and it didn't complain. Is this even burning? Well, the LED is flashing, but I guess if it at 4x speed, I guess... I guess I can't expect it to be fast. And while it's trying... Yeah, while it's trying, I will... Put the original disc back in. Hey, Soul Catcher. Um, we are currently dealing with media problems, so I I want to try this one more time. Let's see if the disc, the drive will behave. So if I go back to deselect, I change its access method back to CD-ROM. You see, I hear it running. It's definitely trying. Update. So to answer the app deselect question, deselect actually predates app by quite a bit. Let's see here. Oh, is it going to behave? Oh, hold on. Hold on. I think it's actually reading the CD. I think it only just took a few tries. Yeah, because that's farther than it got last time, and I, I just realized I nudged the camera. Because that's, um, that's trying to read, yeah, it's installing from the CD now. Okay. Um, third time's the charm, I guess. All right, I like I said, I I'm pretty sure it's a CD-ROM drive on its pretty much its last leg. So I am I am basically going to assume that I am going to have to get a replacement, um, probably a PCM CIA card replacement because no, I'll probably get a PCM CIA SCSI card so I can go through the replacements as need be because God Almighty, I. I go through CD-ROM drives like nothing. I've <sighs> in my old desktop, I had two CD-ROM drives give up in a four-year period, and I just seem to be deaf to them. They used to drop like flies when we were using CDs regular. Well, you know, it is completely possible that ThinkPad, the ThinkPad, is in fact having um, indigestion. I just realized that the camera is a little dark. Let's make it a little brighter. Make it just a tad brighter. Um, the LCD I've got, it's just a... What is this? I always forget what this is. This is... what One thing I like about this panel is I can set it to letter bar. So, like, when I get the... Uh, when I finally end N Commander's ongoing Commodore Nightmare, um, it will be able to do this at the correct resolution for it. Yeah, so it's just a 24-inch uh, HP monitor of some sort. So I already have a physical back at, uh, backup Kaiba Wolf, but yeah, I'll just put the CDRW uh, in the box with the main CD. And there's no guarantee this won't fail again because I have had this fail. It usually fails about halfway through the install because the disk just says... And yes, that's the sound I'm making, and, the, and that's the story I'm sticking with. So, um, chat, let me know your odds if um, if you think we're going to get for the entire install. Because the, the beautiful thing is that once we're done with the install process, we still have to install updates. So, let's see here. Um, I don't think it's a PC. This is a laptop. This isn't a desktop. So, yeah, so I do have networking up and running, um, although the net way I have networking up and running, it will not survive a reboot um, because this is a really cruddy version of Debian. Um, like, I, 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 I'm trying not to think too hard about it, but this is the type of Debian that just caused pain. So, what was a failed dungeon seeker? I accidentally clicked off. Um... Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's definitely reading now. It's why I, I'm thinking that there's got to be a capacitor on the edge. 
because sometimes this drive will behave and it'll be fine. And then sometimes it does what you guys just saw, but it only ever does it under Linux. But that may just because Windows retries enough times, the disk builds up enough capacity, um, capacitance, and then it starts spinning. Um, Pigeon Duck thing, they are available um, under archive.debian.org. We, we were actually installing off apt-get before I controlled seed it because um, the problem with using apt on is that it needs to download the full package and then install. I have the ThinkPad set to dual boot, and because it's dual booting, it's um, um, I don't have that much free disk space. Let's see, what do, actually, how much do I have right now? So if I go root most secure password in the world. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm hearing the CD-ROM drive is making the sound of its people. Did, no, it's still going. It's still going. It's fine. This is fine. This is all fine. So, yeah, so right now it's currently used 148 megabytes. It's got, so 23%. Uh, we can unmount the NFS mount because I don't actually need it anymore. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay, all right. Yeah, I he I'm hearing a lot of reseeks. I'm pretty sure the, the drive is... The problem, Lone Tech, is that there's not wouldn't have been enough disk space to both download and install in a single go. And while you can kind of deal with that with apt, it's not fun. But uh, it, yeah, it's not exactly making I'm a healthy CD-ROM drive. The problem is that I've taken this ThinkPad apart. It's really non-trivial to do. There's a lot of surface mount caps. But this machine is built right in the period of the capacitor plague. Like the Lovecraft's 46 is um, Lovecraft's 46 is um, before the capacitors really started becoming garbage. This is right in the period. So Dungeon Seeker, D, uh, to answer your question, with deselect. In this period of time, it only used app to download deb files. That's why I had to change the method from app to CD-ROM. So deselect will not actually consider um, apt anymore until I select it back. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it's it's not going to it, deselect will not look at those files until I switch the install method back to app because apt and deselect are still pretty much independent from each other in this version of Debian. So um, now, unfortunately, because we had to actually get networking up and running, there are some things that I was going to show that I couldn't, but eh, so it goes. You know, I just realized I don't think I announced in my Discord that I, um, I was live streaming, but I like to think that people would have seen the stream announcement. And uh, at this point, if you enjoy what you're watching, please hit subscribe. If you really enjoy what you're watching, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon. Um, now that the shameless plug is out of the way, we just get to listen to the sounds of the ThinkPad CD-ROM drive dying. I, I, I don't know what else to describe it as. If binary distributions were that bad in 1998. So, a lot with Debian is the or should I say Linux distributions of this era, is a lot of it is that it's stuck with proprietary drivers. Red Hat Linux went on a very, very large, and very long uh, spree to liberate. I just realized the music cut out at some point. Let's, let's see. You know what? Here's an album called Cinematic Travel by Epidemic Sound. I don't know if it's any good, but let's have more things so red hat basically went on a we're going to throw money at this problem and basically paid a bunch of um graphics companies to create drivers the problem is that most of those drivers were proprietary at the time such as the one for the neo magic display card in this thinkpad they also mostly did not work particularly well 
as we're going to see when we get the driver for the sync pad up and running. Yeah. I don't know how much it's the capacitor versus not. I'm not getting any D-message stuff. But like I said, I'm hearing a lot of drive seeks, but it's also possible it's got everything it's needing. So, because this drive has a fairly large buffer on it, so who knows? Yeah. 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 Low, Debian in particular made things a lot more difficult, but at this point in Debian's life, um, Debian was being directly sponsored by the Free Software Foundation as the premier free and open source Linux distribution. Um, in fact, Linux, Debian uh, was incorporated uh, to have a holding company called Software in the Public Interest, specifically so the Free Software Foundation could throw money at them. Now, if you know anything about the state of the Free Software Foundation and Debian today, um, you might know that there has been some interesting bad blood in that area. Um, Mia, I am pretty well, I, I'd be willing to try it. We'd have to install a bigger hard drive in the ThinkPad, um, or we'd have to do it with a minimal system, but honestly, it's gonna be less fun with a minimal system. So I would have to put, I would have to put, probably put an eight, eight or 16 gigabyte hard drive in this thing pad at a minimum to even attempt that sort of upgrade path. So, um, yeah. So, but let me see here. So this has a standard 2.5, uh, inch, uh, PADA HDD bay. It's not like the newer thing pads where you can just pop a screw and get to it. It's, we need to dismantle the entire fracking machine and get to it. But, um, yeah, I, I suspect if I would, the, the problem with this ThinkPad is it has what's called um, disk geometry issues. And when I say has issues, I mean it has issues. Like the BIOS has interesting so mia the problem with doing it in a vm is that the vm will have the full capacity of the amd ryzen processor in this system and if i was going to do it in a vm i would probably start with debian 1.2 but i'm really tempted to see how far i could take it on real hardware and if i have to go as far as recompiling debian because i like pain well it is an option so I mean, let's be honest. You are talking to someone who literally wrote a patch for Soft Landing Linux version 1.2 uh, uh, for Linux 1.2, so it can install on a hard drive bigger than 504 megabytes. Yep. So, you know, it, th th this is this is the type of thing you're listening to. I just realized I am echoing on myself, and I apologize for that. It. Well, more specifically, I had the stream unmuted, and I think it was getting picked up on itself. So, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to make a real-time video out of this stream. <sighs> the reception to the last one I did was not particularly great. But maybe if I have some a few hours free. I mean, my most recent video editing project is actually going unusually smoothly. So... So the problem with, so an SD2 IDE doesn't really solve the problem. That's pretty much all a BIOS issue. Um, but I could install a new mechanical rust drive in there. I mean, th th there's nothing stopping me from doing it. Okay. Um, Mil Milmike, I, I used FIPS to resize the existing Windows 95 partition on this system. Um, so it was indeed something that was um it i did i did repartition i non-destructively repartitioned but lilo is currently does not recognize the 95 partition so we're going to have to futz with it and see if we can still get back into 95. um gentoo installs faster than this not if we were compiling on a machine of this era no no this is a 150 i ran gentoo when it was brand new 
back when Emerge was basically a set of shell scripts. And no, Emerge took much longer than this. So, yeah. So, um, well, compared to compared to Arch is everything is com easy compared to this. If you look at this and see, look at Arch, yeah, pain, suffering, owie. Honestly, I understand why people like Arch, but it's not my sort of thing. I don't like dealing with rolling releases. I don't like having to futz with my system on a regular basis, which it was my Arch experience when I the brief period I tried it. Um, but I will say that the Arch Wiki is probably the greatest source of Linux knowledge known to mankind. And holy cow, I need to drink something. Okay. Sear. Um, the BIOS on this thing, I don't think is actually possible. Um, I, to my knowledge, it's a hard, um, oh, Anima. Hey, look, we can do Amiga emulation if we really want to. I'm just going to note that this is physically installing the files. We haven't even gone to the configure stage of Debian installer. So... Well, modern De <laughs> um the problem is a lot of it is I used to think Debian was probably the best distribution that with Ubuntu, but a lot since the system D migration, uh no, no, we're not dead. It just went to standby. We're um ever since the system D migration, Debian just has not had the same level of quality. Um I personally think Ubuntu and to a lesser extent Mint are the best least hassle distributions. I don't like Mint for historical reasons, but it's but I have issues recommending Ubuntu to the point I actually have problems with recommending Ubuntu Linux as a whole because the Linux ecosystem and this is someone who's worked professionally with Linux for 10 15 years is it's 99% politics 1% actually using something and I kind of feel like this was a big box product and from what I've been told that this was sold for about 50 bucks it it should never have been sold on store shelves I mean just look at even excluding the fact that we've had CD-ROM seek errors I mean it wasn't a good product and I have a lot of I don't have the greatest feelings about Ubuntu, uh, about Linux as a whole, to the point that I don't actively advocate for it. I do run it on a day-to-day -day basis, but I don't go out of my way to try and convert users. Um, so, Mercado, um, if you ever get the it's not going to be installed, the app, apt-get hyphen F is your friend. And uh, the CDRW, I just was burning just finished yeah no we haven't even gone to the configure we're, we're literally just copying files off the cd-rom this the cd-rom is spinning all night long all night long all night long and um there's a lot of things broken i mean i when when this system is installed we will not have a working dhcp stack we already had to do a patch to have a working network card getting x going is going to be interesting and by interesting i mean welcome to hell so yeah excuse me a lot of it is that red hat has been running roughshod over linux for the better part of 10 years and ubuntu has basically been Hey, here's Unity. It's a pile of garbage, but we want you to use it. I that that's the real state of the ecosystem. So it, it it's uh Lone Tech, you think that most of these packages won't have configure scripts. You think most of these packages won't have uh configure scripts. <laughs> And uh, generation and generation, 
there is no USB on this machine, and even if it did, it would be USB 1.1. So, um, no, it wouldn't be. It, it's it, it's just the CD-ROM drive that is slowly committing suicide on stream. Well, yeah, 10 years ago, I could advocate for Ubuntu as well. I used to work for Canonical. I legitimately used to work at Canonical. Um, and I had some really, it, the experience there was long enough to completely make me lose any and all faith with the ecosystem. Um, and that's about all I'm going to say on stream about it, but yeah. Uh, generation, generation, this machine doesn't support Pixie Boot. It supports RPL on token ring only. And I do literally mean it needs to be token ring. So, um, yeah. Because, um, I'm, amazingly, I actually have the correct token ring card for this ThinkPad. I even have a token ring MAU that works. Um, so, it is possible that we could run Linux and maybe Windows 95 over, over token ring. So, you know, the, you know, I, you could say I liked it so much I put a ring on it. Yeah, and, then, and, and I'm suddenly going to watch all my view count go flying out the window because I made that joke. So, um, I actually need an ESA token ring card for, Cthulhu, for Lovecraft's 486. Um, so, yeah. Um, in this case, it's not slow CD-ROM drive. This should be a 24x CD-ROM drive in this ThinkPad. It's just it's a CD-ROM drive that is having massive indigestion problems. Like I've like right now, yeah, I can actually hear it's running just fine, but then it's going to spin down. It's going to spin up, and then it's going to spin down. So. But, you know, it's amazing how old some of the software is. I mean, there goes Slurn. There goes um, NFS Server, Mutt, Ed. <sighs> Floppy tape module. Because, you know, that's the thing everyone needs is a floppy, a floppy disk controller tape, tape drive. Because those were a thing. GCC 2.7. What's the name of Lovecraft's 486? Um, I, I can't say the name on stream because the um, I would get swallowed alive. And I um, I don't want that. I, I don't want to spend the rest of eternity being digested by Cthulhu. In this case, um, pian Piano Cthulhu. Uh, Piano Keydroy? Uh, uh, Keydro. It's not the CD-ROM that's dying. It's the CD-ROM drive itself that's dying. And there goes After Step. So, um, yeah. So, let's see here. Debian isn't as bad for newbies as it used to be. I, I, it's considerably harder with Debian of 2021 to blow a foot off. But this box set was what the Free Software Foundation was pushing, you know, to multiple people. So I have a special amount of vile for this because this is what VA Linux was saying. This is the best possible Linux you can get. You know, it's the last Linux you'll ever need. And when we get this installed, there is so much missing crud in this install. It's not even funny. There is no word processing. You had to get Star Office or buy word perfect i mean i have big boxed word perfect on the shelf behind me um so yeah given lovecraft's history yeah actually now that i think about it i didn't even think about that but lovecraft had shall we say some less than politically correct views um but yeah Ugh. That being said, you know, at, at this point with YouTube, 
they're trying to make it so family friendly as to be a G-rated film. I mean, just look at the last two adpocalypses. So, okay. So, Slack, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Slack. On one hand, the fact that Slack exists as a thing that works and works well, woohoo! But the Slack package manager is the most primitive thing known to mankind. It literally reminds me of the System 5 package manager from AT&T Unix. So, yep. Here, so everything's going. So, um, actually, chat, while we're installing, I want you to make a decision. What desktop manager am I going to... Oh, I should say desktop manager. What window manager should I use? I am partial to Window Maker, but we could use Enlightenment 15. There's After Step. There's Open Look. And there's a few other ones. So, um, I'm kind of leaning towards Window Manager myself. But, yeah, we could, um, we could definitely go for a few choices here. So, you want to see me run CDE on this for no good reason. Captain Falcon, you monster. You monster. Uh, so, KDE at this point is an option, but KDE was not free software. KDE was, um, KDE was still proprietary at this point. Um, the, uh, so I, I think W uh, F V M uh, F V W M ninety five is winning, and no, we are not running Leyland. Okay, if you guys want me to do C D E, I will do it, but not on Ancient Debian. I don't, I don't want to torture myself that badly. I, I, uh, 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 <sighs> I feel like I should set up a bot where YouTube chat commands become console commands and see how many how many YouTube stream uh, how many people on a YouTube chat does it take to install a Linux distribution. We are we uh, I'm not doing CDE on this ThinkPad, but I will do C CDE on a later stream. And it's on that note that the plug the end commander plug is that if you like this con if you enjoy this content please like and subscribe. If you really like this content, support me on Patreon. If you want to see me go go completely insane, keep watching because I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Yeah, a and Commander had a kernel panic. That that's a real apt. That's a real apt thing. So I used to work. I never worked for Twitch. I used to work for Beam. I built FTL. I know more about video streaming than I ever want to know. Okay. Open look. Go all Sun OS. We can go full Sun OS. We can go full Sun OS. You have conditioned us to, ex to extreme pain. You know, the problem is I know I did it to myself. Like, when people watch LGR, they expect quirky oddware. When people watch 8-Bit Guy, well, I'm going to leave that one where I, I am brought it when people watch me they just want to see me have pain and suffering um but yeah no no enlightenment didn't have eye candy this is this is enlightenment 14 or 15 in this version Let's see here. 156 one to <laughs> one to do the install and well me crumbly enlightenment. Uh, the thing is that this Linux distribution is straight out of 1999. Look at that Mozilla from 1998, right there. Uh, oh look, it even ha it does have sudo. In fact, it has the version of sudo that makes it really easy to get a root prompt without a password by accident. This is a Sun OS moment. Let's see here. Um. Jason, Jason, no, I uh, I couldn't afford the latency to drink away the pain. I had to literally take apart libvpx and figure out what added latency because um, I kid you not, at Mixer, the uh, goal for FTL was we want Twitch Plays Pokemon without latency. That was the mission statement I was handed, and I still do not know how I actually managed that because... 
yeah. Yeah. You're like Durangle uh, Durang one if you knew what he was doing but continued to torture himself. Um, seven six two, you're not wrong with that sentence, which really should bother me more than it does. I want you to instill with an early no 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 I I I if we are going to dive into the if I tried to get a power Mac for this if I could have gotten the right model of Mac I would have installed the Mac OS eight not Mac OS eight the Mac OS eight oh look look we just got to the configure stage the pain and suffering is now going to begin. So, um, default paper size is letter. I want Chad to keep track of how many questions I answer. So we're now at one. You now need to set your X NLS path. That one was just an enter. So we are done copying stuff. So the, the wheels on the installer go round and round, round and round. The wheels on the installer go round and round, round and round, round and round. Uh, end commander is going crazier, crazier, crazier. So, yeah. So, installer goes brr. So, oh. Also, guys, keep track of how many times this question is. What is the new server that I should use for reading? You're not going to get one. So, it's installing the jargon file. So, um, yeah. So, there's no, there is no dev conf. There's no, um, let's see here. How many items should be in the learning file? Um, I'm going to go with default. Uh, do you want to configure VD dial now? No, because we don't have a modem. Uh, I was this setting up. This is setting up IRC. IRC.debian.org is fine. I don't actually care. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, Gom. This configured. This configure script assumes a correctly conf installed and configured sound driver. <laughs> I'm just gonna quit. I'm just gonna quit. I'm just gonna quit. Okay. Uh, default links homepage. I'm just gonna put Debian.org. I don't actually think it would work, but you know, it's amusing. Oh, this question. So this is GPM, this is the mouse event server. So to configure this properly, you have to hit no here. You have oh Frank, I, I just configured I had to hit yes there. Uh we'll fix that later. Um, because I just screwed up my serial port by answering that question wrong. So uh end commander mistake count at one. Um so we we are going to actually need to fix that because I actually do need the serial port. Hey, look, it's another news group install question. No, I'm not installing in. We are not making this a new server. Um, let's see here. We're installing cracklib2. Yep, that's an accurate name. Um I I I'm feeling this. I I I'm 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 gelling like Magellan. So, um <laughs> Yeah, this is this is and this is this is this isn't looking into the abyss. This is the abyss looking back. So okay, so it's building an HTML tree. So guys, I did a time lapse of this on the original YouTube video. You realize I had to sit here going fumpa 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 with the keyboard. God, I'm sorry, that sounds really subjective. Um. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, this th this is probably going about as downhill as it can. Um, get your friends, get them in here because you're going to get to watch a YouTuber go mad in real time. Um, hey, look, it's asking yet again for another new server. <laughs> That's the third one. <laughs> We're going to go by hand. Uh, I'm happy with this configuration. <laughs> uh, we are not online. I'm not setting up net news. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, happy pots. I'm in my happy place. I'm in my happy place right now.
Okay. So, um, NTP server. Uh, is it time.debian.org? Does that actually work? Um, yeah. And so then here's another great question. This is one I almost brought up during the video due to time. It basically says, do you want to synchronize your network clock? You do you trust the time, you know, how's the user supposed to answer this? If you trust that the time on the server is more than you trust the battery in your clock, then you can run it by default. But it, it basically says that some folks think this is a bad idea. This is the absolute wonderfulness that is the this configuration. So we're going to hit no there. Okay. So the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. So there's seashell. X C she sells seashells by the seashore. Wow, I actually did that pretty decently. Um we could you know, if we if if you know, maybe as a ten thousand sub special, I will do plan nine. Like we could actually try doing it on plan nine. That or GNU herd. Um, because I oh guys, hold on. Debian Debian um users of this, you, you're going to recognize this prompt. I'm just going to put it, bring it up here. Does this prompt look familiar to you? The, this one through five questionnaire, the, does it look like, um, it, do, you, do you realize that this prompt is in modern versions of Debian when you still install it? <laughs> Local delivery only. Uh, you can you can bring it to the end commander user. I, this is fine. This is fine. Uh, yep. Uh, this is good. This is all good. God, God help me if I was um, I was going to try something a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, uh, I can get a bash prompt right now, but I, you know what? No, I'm going to let this go. Um, no default X server is set, or the previous one has been removed, guys. I want you to look at how bad this actually is. So do you want to make VGA 16X server the default? The answer is no. So wait. So do you think it's going to do something sane like give you a prompt? Okay. Uh, another prompt for SVGA. Blah, blah, blah. Wait for it. Uh, I don't know my configuration flags for play MIDI. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I could try leaving it blank. Okay. Uh, okay. Now it asks if I have an SVJ. I think SVJ, no, SVGA might work. I'll just hit yes there. But watch, it's now that I've selected an X server, watch what it's going to keep doing. Yeah, this is, um, th th this is going down real hard. If you, like I said, if you really appreciate me, I'm going to drop a link to my Patreon because, you know, it, it my Patreon is fueled by the tears of users. So, oh, here's the next question. Uh, do you want to make Mach 64 the next one? You notice that it's asking this for each and every single X server. Yes, no, I am um, Jason uh, Neozid. I actually it misconfigured the mouse earlier. I can't go back to fix it. Oh, also notice that the floppy disk, um, uh, you can't, it's already scrolled off screen, but the floppy disk um, F tape did not install properly. Uh, we're not going to install ISDN config because I don't live in Europe. Let's see here. Um, do we want, do you want your color, do you want your system information in color or mono? I don't know what this fascination with mono is because most of, I guess there were a fair number of 386s with monochrome displays, but even in 1998, you'd think. Um, GNU plot is net, not set as set UID root. Do you want to, good, do you want to change it? So, um, okay. Ah, yes, the two, um, we have both dictionaries. We have both American and British. So, yeah, this is fine. This is really fine. 
God help me, I do something like try and install NetWare. Or not NetWare, uh, Unixware. Okay. Do you, oh, here, here we go. We get to we get to choose what we're going to make the default window manager. So let we're going to say that we're going to make Open Look Virtual Window Manager the default. Guess what it's going to do when we get to the next one? Okay, it's installing fonts. It's installing fonts. The the crank is going. Okay, I don't know what XMCD is. Oh, um, media displayer. Oh God, it wants to set up CDDB. There's no possible way this could work. There is no possible way this could work. My God, it actually worked. That is not actually... Hold on. I, I, I'm sorry. I have to check the log files. I got to see if that actually worked. How did... That? What? No, I've actually I've actually installed and managed Unixware. It's not all that bad. It's just its compiler is um there are words about the Unixware compiler, but uh I actually have an RS6000 that may be coming my way that is going to go right up there with Lovecraft's 486. This, this is okay. Everything is fine. Everything is good. Yeah, so apparently CDDB has done what no other web service can do, and it has a stable programming API over 22 years. I am not making this, this up. I am not making this up. Uh, the Unixware compiler can no longer bootstrap GCC NeoZed because the Unixware compiler is uh, C only unless you pay the extra for C++. Um, we could do Unixware at a later stream point. I mean, the fact of the matter is I've got 165 people watching right now according to the admin panel, which is quite frankly wowzers. I mean... Considering my channel only has 6,000 subscribers, that's not insignificant. So I'm tempted to do more live streams more frequently. It's just they do take a toll on me, and I have some chronic health issues. So I don't – doing them regularly is a little bit hard for me. So um, the problem, Piano Key Joe, is it's a micro-channel um, uh, micro – channel. RS6000, and that's about all I'm going to say. Um, we are not going to make FVMV2. We're going to see that question about six more times. Um, default window manager. It's installing Xterm. Let's see here. Uh, I forgot what the minimum one you need is. Um, do we want to install XBuffy? They can notify you by blinking a keyboard LED when new mail is arrived. However, to do so, this program must run as root. This doesn't seem like something that I should install. I, I mean, it just seems like this is a bad idea, and we're just going to keep moving. So, oh yeah, so this is the other cute thing. It's going to install about five different versions of Emacs. Because, you you know, most people only need one version of Emacs in this life. So the pain and suffering is I have good days and I have bad days. It is chronic health issues. If I, um, if I didn't think I could do this, I would have canceled the stream today. But it's why this channel does not have a regular um, upload strategy. Because I sometimes have days where I can't physically get out of bed. And when that happens, I can't do any video editing. So, what? Okay, uh, Sony, your name who will get me content striked if I say out loud. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. So, Emacs is still installing. It is currently compiling all the Lips um, versions. Yeah, it's going to install multiple versions. Um of Emacs, which, you know, you could really, is a perfect summarization of it because the Free Software Foundation sponsored Debian. Debian 
basically was a compile give you the free software version of the world. And what better way than give you multiple versions of Lisp and Emacs? So, pretty much. Hey, look, I actually did get one dislike. I, I guess I guess the one Debian developer. Um, oh no, wait, I am a Debian developer. So, um, you know, there, there are a couple of things I've actually considered doing on stream. I've actually wanted to set up Hercules and an emulated IBM mainframe because um, punch cards uh, is a thing. And um, well, the one time I looked into emulated um, system 390, it was a glorious oh my god to the point that I'm probably going to do a dedicated video on it. So, but just to give you an idea of my current hell, do you guys do you guys want to get a bit of look looking at what my um, current project is because it's currently over there. The astute of you might notice that it's in pieces, um, pending some serious reassembly. Those who are on Discord know exactly what I've been going through. Um, but let me just make sure this is pointed back at the monitor. But uh, yeah. Uh, did, did it just run out of disk space? Hold on. No, it's fine. Okay, we're now we're now done with Emacs 20. We're now on Emacs 19. So um, this is going well. This, this is fine. This is all fine. Um, I definitely want to do S390 content. Um, my current video production strategy is my fr – so you know how like a lot of my videos open with the sentence, this weird thing I bought on eBay – well, as it turns out, my friends, and I'm going to use the words friends here in quotes, will actually buy me something on eBay, and yeah. Yeah, so really, really appreciate it, Cell. I really, I, I almost feel like, you know, I think I got, will give you guys here, you know, I'm, I'm going to, while this installs, I'm going to, I'm going to bring back up the full screen. So we're going to go full streamception here. And for the love of God, stream, do not crash when I do this. I'm just going to open DaVinci Resolve Studio. Um, and yes, I did actually pay for the premium version. So because I had to for the flicker effect on the Dronada, which is why you will never see the Dronada on a live stream. But um, if we load up the compact portable project... Maybe, just maybe, I'll play a few clips from this. And I just realized this, I loaded the wrong config profile for Resolve. But the, pro yeah, the um, the problem is that I'm trying to use DaVinci Resolve with an AMD graphics card. And this is not a thing that you should actually do um, if you run Linux. Because if you don't do it in exactly the right way, you get exactly what... I just saw, which was nothing. I just realized I'm I'm just watching the stream now. Hold on. I'm a professional streamer. Oh look, uh, we're now at X Banner. Do we want to run it, run it startup? So, yes. Uh, we are going to go back to the configuration questions. So we are now at. Do we want to make S3 the default instead? You notice that at no point that it said let's open a video card. So, okay. Uh, now we're installing X Emacs 20, so Emacs counter go is going up. <sighs> um, Angelus, hello, welcome to the stream. Um, we have Emacs. In fact, if anywhere everyone in the stream wants their own version of Emacs, feel free to let me know because I've got plenty here. I have old Emacs, I have new Emacs, I have X Emacs, I have Emacs X11. <laughs> This is fine. This is fine. The, 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 the hand crank is turning. The hand crank keeps on turning. Everything is fine. I, my vo I, 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 I'm feeling, um, me crumbly. I mean, the thing is for me, it's all rel. So I don't actually do Linux content that often because 
doing Linux for me is like low effort content because I, I don't mean that as an insult. It's just I've done so much with Linux that I could literally do an entire Linux video unscripted and not have to like do any research. So when I, I like to do research for my projects, I like to explore new things. But I also know that there's not a lot of Linux content on YouTube. So I kind of balance it because I find it more interesting to make other content. But I know a lot of people really like my Linux content. And I also think it's important to document. And that's uh, X, uh, XFTP asking a question. No, um, I live in the world where um, free software. See, I just use Nano. Are you kidding? Na Nano is the best text adder. Fight me. But I, I do attend I do attend EdCon, the official uh, the official conference for the Ed Text Adder. Oh, I like this question. We now get to byte compile all the Emacs files to make it run faster. This is going to take a bit. I'm going to actually go use the restroom while Emacs compiles itself. I will be back. Okay, Emacs is still installing. Um, yes, okay, so it's going to ask these questions a bunch of times. So we're just going to let it byte compile all these modules. So, okay. See, the nice thing about BSD games is it has Rogue, but I prefer NetHack. Ah, look, Ghost View. More Ghost View. So that's another two questions. We're installing Window Maker. Let's see here. Uh, do we want to make this the default te uh, thing? No. It's installing hyper latex. This is fine. Everything is fine. Um. Yeah. No. I just stepped away to use the restroom. I get. I'm guessing the background music is a little bit too soft. If no one can hear it. There we go. I didn't realize it was that low. So, okay. It is still trying to compile stuff. Uh, drink it. No, Marco, we do not drink every time I get asked a redundant question because I don't want to resp be responsible for other people's liver failure. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't need that on my conscience. Uh, yeah, okay, we, we can, uh, we can byte compile dot file dot proc mail. Yeah, first thing it's going to get deleted when I try and get disk space. So, um, I turned it down at the beginning. I'm, I'm not the greatest streamer in the world. It's a lot easier for me to do video editing because, um, failure is, failure is easier to edit out than not or emphasize. Oh god, it's installing Sane. That, those... Packages I don't need. Okay, so we're gonna dot. We're gonna install another byte module. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Um, I didn't realize that the audio was that low. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if I'm gonna get a content ID strike. I am using Epidemic Sounds licensed music. I've had to issues with them. It's not so much I've had issues with them as. YouTube's content ID system doesn't like me. So, okay. There are quite a few things I want to cover that I don't know when I'll ever get a chance to. Uh, I would love to do more stuff about Windows CE. 
I wouldn't mind diving into the BSDs. Um, there's also I I if if I can get the machine that's currently in pieces on my workbench back wearing again, I actually am going to be looking into 8086 Unixes. We're probably going to look into Venix and Xenix 86 um, because that's. Uh, Spoiler alert, that's a compact portable one. It's about the most compatible XT clone you can get. So, yep. Yep, I um I could turn the music off. It's it I'm I'm flexible. I'm I'm still learning. I still feel like I'm learning most of this content creation stuff. So, let's see here. Let's go back. Since I don't think anyone actually heard this the first time, just let me know if it's too loud and I will adjust it. So, um, I to really cover Windows CE in and of itself, I need a copy of Platform Builder. Um, I would really love... I know there's one person in chat who has it and the giant, giant thing of misery um, that goes with it. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but going into CE is a complex topic. I've tried to do a video on Windows NT in and of itself. And I keep kind of going around in circles because of it. Because I find it very difficult. I find it... Okay, that music has lyrics. I didn't realize that. Let me... Let, let's... Uh... Let's find something better to listen to. All right, let's go back to cinematic travel. I can I can deal with cinematic travel. Let's see here. Yep. Um, I I do have a license from Epidemic Sound, and you technically don't need to put it in the description. Although I probably should add it. Um. But yeah, I have a commercial use license from Epidemic Sound. The problem is that content ID. The link, for some reason, it doesn't always work correct. It, it still flags me. Um, I just added the music by Epidemic Sound to the description. But last I checked, it's not actually necessary to put that in there. But I do it anyway, just because I like to attribute these things. Okay. Let me hit the save button on the stream's description. So, uh, where was I? Uh, do you want to make SCW? I don't even know what window manager that one is. I don't actually even recognize it. So, there we go. So, there was another one. You don't have Platform Builder anymore? Soulcatcher, have a great night. Um, I will see you when I see you. So, don't be a stranger. So, it's setting up image magic. So, everything, everything is still going. This is fine. Everything is fine. So, I think we're getting close to the end of the installation. I'm not entirely sure, but we will see. Uh, let's see here. RF kill drives me crazy. It's, it's one of those things that... Why does that exist? And why do you have... You know, there's like, there would be a million better ways than dealing with RFK. Hey, look at that. Install OK. Press, hit, and return. Okay, so now we're on the configure stage, which if there's anything that failed, it will pop up here. So it's running. So, um, you have missed the first two hours. We've had some technical difficulties. And when I say we've had technical difficulties, it's a lot of technical difficulties. Okay. So, D-pack, pending, move. Okay. So, all right. We now have a full Debian installation. So, now we go and quit deselect. So basically, if the install hadn't glitched out, this is where we would have been originally. So let's do a reboot. Uh, and I'm going to first show you offhand that nothing works. Because this is the authentic Debian experience. So let's let it reboot. 
So, all right. So all the services that it started are now stopping. Net Tamagotchi server. What is the Net Tamagotchi server? Why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? You using Wayland? Uh, me crumbly. This is a bit too old for Wayland. Okay. So we should reboot here in a moment. Wait for it. There it goes. So yeah, yeah, we we we're going to have to do quite a few things because it's um it's going to be fairly broken. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to see if we can get back into Windows. So I have to fix the Lilo config because I want to see if it survived all of that. So, no, I remember what Tamagotchis were. I just, what is a net Tamagotchi? I, 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 I don't know what that is. So I need to fix GPM's configuration. So, okay, so, and it's complaining that X, X's config cannot be found. So, let's fix, we got quite a few things we gotta fix. So, if we look in the info, we need to look at GPM post install. Okay, I'm probably just gonna have to remove it and reinstall it. Because, unfortunately, DPAC reconfigure is not a thing in this version of Debian. So this is probably the easiest way to do it. I don't actually need this, so you know what? I'm going to just not leave it installed because this is just going to get in the way. In theory, this lets console applications access the mouse device, but eh. So the next thing I want to fix, I actually want to fix Lilo. Uh, apt get install nano. Do I have Pico? I don't even have Pico. Conf. So, how do you... Okay, now, I gotta look up how you actually... Alright, I gotta actually look up the config thing. Uh, let me see here. Lilo configuration file partition. Because I don't actually remember the syntax for this. Because, when was the last time... Okay, so it's other equals dev hda1 label win 95 and then i have to run lilo to install it all right so let's actually see if windows 95 installs so yep um i don't really feel like using emacs i really don't i um that there are there is a point where i'm like nope so I do want to see if not Windows 95 still works. So uh, you hit caps lock to break to the Lilo config prompt. Win 95. Oh, that's promising. But does it actually boot? Does it actually boot? Ned Tamagotchi server has a Git Hub page updated in eight, September 18th. 2017. <sighs> okay. Alright. So, yeah, Windows works. Well, uh, every time I listen to that sound, it, it just makes me nostalgic. I... I I, my first computer was a 386 Desk Pro that was a hand-me-down. Um, but my first computer with a sound card was with 95. It was a Packard Bell Legend. Yeah, so we got 70 megabytes free. We could probably free up some more disk space if I was determined using partition magic. Because really, if you want to dual boot back in those days, you really had to use commercial tools. Sudo, have a good stream. Okay. So, okay. So, we know XP works. Or not. 
We know XP works. Let's try that again. So, 95 survived our dual boot. Which, yay. So, oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, I'll, I'll show it once we're fully up and running. But uh, there's some amusing things to be noted in the message. So, let's let this boot back up. So... No, no, we're, we're going to leave Windows installed. We're going to leave Windows installed. Primarily because I have something appropriately cursed that I'm going to need Windows installed with. So if we take a look in dmessage, though, um, if you look at the processor errata, you can see that this is an Intel Pentium 75 megahertz. I'm just going to point my finger at this one and wait for folks to realize what I'm pointing at. Well, noting that the kernel for this version of, um, sorry, this is, it's a 150 megahertz Pentium, but the CPU check says 75 to 200. But I'm going to wait for chat to realize what I'm pointing at. So, yeah. I forgot if there's anything else interesting to look here. It's a Hitachi. Oh, so it's a 20x drive, not a 24 um yeah so that's that's about it so i do want to get x running but to get x running is a little bit complicated so oh actually it's a lot more complicated so there is a utility called xf86 setup so it's going to try and switch to graphics mode, and this will actually succeed. Although I have no working mouse because CRAD. Okay, I guess GPM is actually needed in this version. I'm trying to use the track nub, and it uh, it no worky. So let's abort. P get install GPM. So we're actually going to have to fix this. So uh, of course. I have config, inet, config, uh, right, because if I want to install from the CD, I'd have to go for deselect, so let's, yeah, you know, that, that's the path of least resist. No, I took the CD out, never mind. Never mind. I have config, I have zero, inet zero, blah, 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 100, net mask, 255, 25, 25, zero, because this is a classful default gateway what you see okay now we can install gpm properly so i don't know if people have caught the problem here um sorry i got a little distracted from chat so um yes so neozeed got it in one um this thinkpad suffers from okay so it's not actually giving me the the prompt to reconfigure this package. So the big thing I've got to change here is I've got to change the type to it needs to be is it P I never remember if it's PS aux. Oh, I hold on. Okay, hold on. Abort. So dev PS. Oh, so it's PS aux. So I run gpm config. Uh, I do want to change that. I don't want to run the test program. My mouse is at PS aux. It's a PS2 style mouse. Uh, the rest is fine. Test is config. Okay, the mouse now moves. Nope. Okay. So the problem we have right now is that as installed by Debian, Unless I have the an ATI video card, an S3 video card, a small number of VESA cards like a Trident, or I just want to use 16 VGA, uh, X ain't going to do anything. So if I enter XF86 config, oh look, the mouse works now. So yeah, progress. So the problem here is we need a specific X server and this I would have never figured out back in the day. So the mouse here we've got sorted. It's a PS2 mouse. 
uh, with two buttons, and we do need to emulate a third mouse button. Yeah, all this is fine. So if we go into the card list menu and we go all the way down, uh, even further down, it's all the way down the ends. Where is it? Uh, you can see, no, that's not it. Is it not listed? It should be here. There should be a, yeah, okay. See how, so we have Neomagic laptop notebook, but if I try and like pull up the readme file, um, it doesn't really work. It just talks about Oak Technologies because this program has basically got a hard coded list, but because of Debian's way they packaged X, this doesn't actually work correctly. Like I can't actually select the X server if I go to the advanced option. Like I can see card selected Neo Magic, but I don't have a Neo Magic server I can select. And then again, I won't be able to select a resolution that actually works because welcome to X. So we're going to abort here and we're going to go into deselect. We're going to change the access method to apt because the, the driver we need is not on the CD-ROM. So, okay. So right now we let this, we let this merge information. This is going to take a bit. Okay. Yada, yada, yada. Come on, come on. So, to get this to actually work, we need to go into select, and then we're going to search for Neomagic. And you'll notice here that it's listed as a non-free server. Um, it, basically, it's also, if we look in the description, uh, I don't remember how you scroll the description. Um, you have to alter a bunch of files by hand. It, this is not trivial. So if we want to install it, is it, I think it's plus. Yeah, it's plus. So then I can hit period. Let's see here. I mark it. It's control, and then I can do install. So that get so that installs the X server, but you can't go for the normal configuration process for this because. That would be too easy. And also, it's going to install updates, so this is going to take a few minutes. Um, I've seen XF86 setup actually work, but... Eh. Alright, let me move my microphone a little bit. And so we're just going to have to wait for the download bar to go brrrr, because... That is just the story of the night. So, yeah, but so far so good. I mean, all things to considered, I will definitely say that we are making progress. We've got the basic Linux system up and running. And um, beyond that, let's see here. I'm not, well, beyond that, we basically just need to uh, configure it. And then we should be able to start X. And then we get to start looking for Star Office and other programs because, of course, we do. So, yes, progress is being made. And it's all amazing and wonderful and ponies? I don't know. Sorry, sometimes, sometimes it's hard to think of things to say. I've also noticed that I've picked up a few new subscribers since I started the stream. So to anyone who is watching and enjoying, thank you very much. Um, you're, you know, it really does mean a lot to the channel. You know, I know every YouTuber says that, that, you know, please like and subscribe. But it actually makes a really big difference to the YouTube algorithm and helping keeping my channel alive and relevant. So from the bottom of my heart, I am being very serious. Um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube talking about how much those, you know, how much, how much my brain just can't function. God, 
sorry. Uh, on how those things work, but yeah. Hey, look, we're installing Emacs updates. So, pretty much. I don't know. May maybe, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to uninstall all the Emacs. In fact, may maybe we should... Maybe I should make a fundraiser goal if we raise... Ten if we raise twenty dollars in total, I will remove all the Emacs with fire from the system, or maybe we'll just keep going for as many hours as I can, seeing how many upgrades we can install on this version of Debian Linux. So, but my biggest, the biggest thing I remember running Gentoo is every time something like Perl or Python would upgrade, it that was what really was the make or break for me. Does it? It definitely makes a difference if your audience comes with ultimate, auto, armed with automated salt grinders. Why? Why does my audience come with automated salt grinders? That just. That that. I I don't know what an automated salt grinder is, and I'm a, a little. Afraid. Like. Yeah, I I. I don't know. I, I get I. Okay. Anyway. Um. Let me see here. So right now it's downloading all these updates. Um. Once install these updates, we'll be able to continue uh and then we'll set up the neomagic x11 driver once the x11 driver is set up we'll be able to start x once we start x we'll be able to point and laugh is kind of what we're going with net hack update yeah i i noticed that it's updating net hack from version like 231 to 232 so it's already did it install new net news programs it did install net news. I, I, I'm thinking there was a lot of Debian developers that really liked net news. Like, really a lot of people that really liked net, net news. So, I... I don't know. I, I, I legitimately... Do not know. All right. So, okay. So it's going. Oh, look! It's going to erase some Emacs stuff. And I, like I said, I should note that this is all actually downloading from the Debian archive. So, um, I don't remember NetBSD's installer being that bad. What I really remember is the older FreeBSD ones, where configuring something was. You are in a maze of passages, all of them alike, exits in all directions. Hey, look, it's upgrading Perl to uh, 4.004. Yeah, actually, I just realized when this came out, Perl 5 had just come out, and people were still groaning about migrating from Perl 4. I feel old. So, okay. So, uh, so NetBSD used to be a lot more relevant in my li in my life. The biggest problem is that NetBSD really never got any better after the mid 90s, early 2000s, and Linux's ability to run on pretty much everything. Like if NetBSD had done ARM better than Linux, I'd probably use it on ARM, but yeah. Like, I don't find anything wrong with NetBSD, but I never really found a reason to run it. I can find reasons to run FreeBSD and OpenBSD, but NetBSD, not so much. Nothing is showing on ThinkPad's screen. Is, is something wrong with my stream? Or, it, no, uh, my... Hold on. Is something wrong with the stream? 
No, the stream seems fine. Hold on. Something. I I it on my screen I, the stream looks like it's currently up. But I could be wrong. Okay. All right. So apparently stream is okay. So we're currently waiting for uh, LaTeX and Tax to install. The the other great disc hogs. So This was my Debian experience. I, I remember running... So, as I mentioned before, I ran Debian primarily. I, I used to have a Mac Quicksilver. Um, let me... You know, I, I could... We, we can do story time with End Commander right now. So, if we go with... Um, what was it? Power Mac G4. Because... I, my school signed me one of those really colorful iBooks, and I kind of got into the Mac fan club for a while. Yep, here it is. I had the Quicksilver model. Um, and at the time, an Apple machine was pretty good value because Mac OS X was on the verge of coming. You got pretty decent hardware for the price with integrated DVD drives, which was not a standard feature. And, um, hold on. It's, yeah, okay. Nope, that's still working. And, you know, I remember it pretty much just all working. Mac OS X took a long time not to be total garbage. But you could install Linux and it worked great. Mac OS 9 was not a bad daily driver. At least, you know, it wasn't the most stable thing. But it was competing with Windows 98, which was also not a particularly stable thing. Then we got Mac OS X and basically a Quicksilver, I mean, right here, the Quicksilver Mac went all the way to 10 point, Mac OS 10.4, which was the la the second to last PowerPC version. And you could, if you installed a processor upgrade, it went a long time. So back at these days, Apple hardware was pretty good investment. It didn't have the best by date that modern Apple stuff basically does. Oh yeah, and look, uh, Emacs 19 is getting removed. So, I used to be a pretty big Apple fanboy back in the day. I liked many of the Power Macs. I liked, um, I, 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 Mac OS Classic basically was spit and duct tape as far as it actually being a useful system. Um, there's a lot to be said or not to be said about classic max but uh, I gotta fix the brightness because the light in here has changed um, but there was a lot to be said for and against classic so <sighs> yeah I was a Debian developer uh, and, and me crumbly I don't know if you not to toot my own horn but I have written kernel patches for some of my YouTube videos, like legitimately had to write kernel patch. In fact, I will drop a you I will drop I will drop a GitHub on you. Yeah. Because about half the stuff that's currently on my GitHub is all stuff I've done for my YouTube channel. I am an Ubuntu core developer. I was a Debian developer. I am currently out of the key ring because my GNU PG key had to be replaced. And um, I don't have anyone local to re-sign me back in. But I'm not active in the development community, so I'm like, meh. So, uh, I, am I was both a Debian dev and an Ubuntu core developer. I was also an Ubuntu Master of the Universe, and I was a Castle Infinity Architect of uh, Ar Architect of Infinity. These are all actual job titles I've held because this is my life. I don't know nor I wouldn't know nor more if it kicked me in the butt. So anyway, we're still waiting for Emacs. It it really says a lot about the Emacs editor 
that most of the stream seems to be waiting for Emacs. So, uh, no, we're not still configuring Pigeon. We're now installing upgrades so we can install the drivers because we had to install drivers. Yeah, as far as job titles go, Architect of Infinity was one of the more, um, the one of the more that had the interesting suggestives. So, me, I, I, I'm just happy with Resident Madman right now. Yeah. Um, uh, Ubuntu uh, core developer has upload rights to the universe. Uh, has upload rights to the universe. I, I just as I say it, do I realize what this sounds like? Yeah. So so much so much Emacs Emacs um so much Emacs so much Wow. I I damn it. I need I need a I need a meme. For this stream that basically is so much Emacs, so much WoW. Um, no, I didn't build the Infinity Stones for four. Um, you know, I was the guy on the dev team that thought that having a world-ending artifact with um, no safeguards was not a good feature. Well, I, I understand that many people use Emacs... But I don't need five versions of it installed at once. Even the most hardcore Emacs users, it's not sitting there thinking, hmm, today I'm going to use Emacs 19, or should I go with the Emacs 20? Or maybe I should, it's time to uncork that really fine X Emacs. And this is where I lose all my subs, but I actually use Visual Studio Code. So, you know, that's just me. Um... The, 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 there are some holy wars it's just not worth getting into. Isn't Emacs a Lisp semi-IDE thing with built-in serial terminal support? And I'm sitting here thinking, he's not wrong. Yeah, bad, uh, bad dad... Bad dad, come! You are not wrong. You're not exactly right, but you're not wrong. Hey, look, we're now finally installing. So, just to, to note, the the reason it's taken so long to get the X driver installed is because we had to stop and install updates because Debian used to be like Windows. Um, VS Code is basically Microsoft's own take on Atom. Excuse me, sorry. I, uh, I had Subway for lunch and Diet Coke, and apparently all this Emacs talk is causing grade A indigestion. It's hard to write... Now, wait, J JD Prudent... Hold on, hold on. You're, you're making the assumption that it's easy to write Emacs uh, Lisp in Emacs. And the fact of the matter is that Emacs Lisp and Common Lisp are two separate programming languages. So, I know I can use the system, but right now I need I want to get X to use X. I mean, I can switch V terminals. You know, it's right there, but we want to get X going, and so I can't really do anything until X is done. So, yeah. So, yeah, I know I, I know there are things I could be doing, but um I did not um Piano J uh Kijo, I did not have an option to install updates during the install. You can either install from CD-ROM, which would have taken longer, or sorry, from from apt, which would have taken longer because this is a 10 megabit ethernet card. Or install from CD and then install updates. Oh look, it's updating. It's installing more Emacs. Yeah. So, so Debian's i386 port. I know they've talked a lot about sending it off to the bit bin. 
there isn't quite enough support to chop it, but Debian ports that have gone off to have um, been released to elsewhere live on on DebianPorts.org. I mean, if you really, really want to do it, um, there is still builds of Debian 10 for Motorola 680XO. It's mostly maintained for um, it's mostly maintained for the Amiga crowd, but you could probably if I had a classic Mac, I'd probably try it. There's nothing that stops you from running VS Code on a Raspberry Pi aside from the memory usage. Um, I never found that the Pis made very good desktop computers. I know some people have matched it, but you run into so many weird edge cases because non x86 linux is not really loved so eh. so the me crumbly most of what i see from light uh lightweight distros is really what i see um like i can understand if the modules don't always get installed by default but because a full Linux kernel can be pretty fat. But I get where you're coming from on that one. Okay, it's looks like it's almost done installing updates. No, wait, spoke too, spoke too soon. Spoke too soon. I will say that buying a clicky keyboard's been dangerous because I really like listening to the click sound. Because I, I finally retired the Robert Doan keyboard that I've been using for eight years. Um, which probably shouldn't have been that long. So I have a Cosair keyboard. Which they're kind of expensive for what they are. But I really do like it quite a bit. So the thing is, I ran Debian back in the Power P I ran Linux on PowerPC when... Linux ports were still loved, and it was still never very good very then. And the honest fact of the matter is Apple has pissed off so many hackers that a lot of people are just not going to give a damn. Most people that I know who run Mac as developers are only doing so because they have to put up with iOS. And iOS is insane programming environment because, you know... I, I legitimately wonder how many sales of Apple hardware is entirely because Apple doesn't let you develop from Windows. I am going... To, it's possible that ARM Linux has gotten somewhat better, but there was a lot of fundamental issues last time I looked at it. So I'm, I'm hesitant to say, yeah, this is good. So um, we could def... I... Um, some of the earliest res retro computing stuff I did, and this is pre-YouTube, uh, I'll drop a link in the chat, was um, Xenix Restoration and Exploration, um, which I have currently up on my blog, um, which I will drop in the chat. So, yeah, it's still doing byte compiling. Uh, we could definitely do a SCO Unix. I mean, if chat, if people really want me to cover a specific topic, like installing SCO Unix or more explanation on a live stream, we can do it. Because live streams are not a bad time for me to go into some topics that, or for me to do explorations on. Uh, Vin, uh, Vindicat Pro, have a great day or night, depending on whatever time zone you're in. Um... So, okay. All right. So, so far, so good. Everything, everything is as planned. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. I just need to check something. Who is sending me a message? Okay. All right. Sorry. I, I got messages on Telegram. I just wanted to see that, make sure there was nothing on fire. I, Mr. Radar, you're basically right on the nose. ARM Linux is a very sore point for me because I tried to solve a lot of those problems when I was at Canonical, and I try not to think about it. 
But the very long short and short version is that there only is now an effort to semi-standardize ARM booting 10 years after the desktop ARM push. And it's like, this is dealing with, you know, cart after the horse. I mean, it really... I, I'm sorry, it's a really sore point. Hey, look, it's now... So, here we go. So... I want to make X server NeoMagic the default. Uh, we can erase the downloaded deb files. Let's get some hard drive space back. So to actually get the NeoMagic X server to work is a little bit hard. And I admit, I, I already know what I have to do here. Um, because I've done this in the past, so... Somewhere in here, I think it's in docs, X server. Why is it beeping so much at me? Um, <clears throat> let me find this. I Somewhere in here, there's a NeoMagic folder. Grep, NeoMagic. But I don't remember where it gets installed to. I don't think it's an act. Now, let me see here. If I go to... I want to say it's in share. It should be here. I guess it's in dock. Maybe not. You know what? Hold on. Uh, var lib dpack x server info x server i can see all the files installed user doc because yeah this is a old old school so if we go here and we go into examples we have an example x86 config and on this version of x okay so we need to take this file and copy it, it to Etsy X11. Okay. Um, I don't even think M locates installed or locates installed. Oh, okay, locate is installed. The the reason I didn't use locate is because there's no way the database was up to date. So while we are here, let's go into that X86 config file because we need to make quite a few changes to it. So there is a readme file on how you do it. And you know what? Just for the sake of showing it, let's pull up that readme file. I'm going to, I'm going to go crazy because... So this talks about how you configure it. It supports internal flat panels. That means the actual LCD here. Um, it... Or hold on. Did I actually get it? Yeah. So it, it supports the actual LCD flat panel. It supports external. One weird quirk about this ThinkPad is you can actually go up to a much higher resolution on the VGA than you can with the um, internal panel. It doesn't support multi-monitor, but you can configure mirroring, so forth and so on. Um, so basically there's a lot of information here. Like you can see right here, reported working laptops, IBM ThinkPad 380D. So, alright. Okay. So, the, um, to sum up the Linux on ARM situation, I'm sorry, I got a little sidetracked. I basically agree with what Null uh, 1023 is saying in chat that basically outside the Raspberry Pi, the Linux ARM experience is not what I call good. And the only reason the Pi experience is at all decent is because you have dedicated ARM distributions like Raspbian. And it's the point that it's so ubiquitous that, you know, it's what everyone supports. So I'm gonna leave this document file up and running. We're gonna open a new V terminal. Um, and while we do this, I'm going to go into Etsy X11. So I copied the example config here. 
And most of this I'm basically leaving as is. The That's a PS2 mouse device. The mode lines, uh, we don't want the 10, uh, 1024 by 480 mode line. I actually, I could leave that mode line because this, it won't damage anything if I leave it in. These are LCDs, these are not CRTs, but we do want to disable that mode. Because yes, th this was back in the day where you had to edit the config file to change your resolution. So 24 bit, I preferably want to be at 16 bit resolution. I don't remember exactly how you set that. All right, you know, let's let's just write. Let, we're going to just comment out the 24 bit because if I go 24 bit, it will lag because that's what it does under Windows. Uh, 16 bit is about as high as you want to go on this machine, unless you really need it for some reason. Uh, come on. You know, I feel like I should just use Emacs because I'm going to be f a lot less annoyed with this if I just use Emacs. Okay, so we're going to just comment out the 24 section. Uh, let's see here. So the other things that we need to turn on is we want to turn on the internal display. We want the external display. Um... I think that's it. So control S, control C, start X. Well, it's... Hey! Bum, bum, bum. We're running as root, which I really don't want to be. So let's exit. And actually, now that we are here, let's do a reboot because this will bring uh, XDM up and running. Yeah, when x Rander came out, um, it was like magic. It, like, legitimately magic. Um, but it's implemented in such a way that there's, um, the, the effort to replace X with Leyland is very much justified. Like, there isn't, you know, the criticisms of X are completely valid. But I also have a lot of problems with Leyland, with Wayland. So it's kind of a give and take. And a lot of it is the... It's complicated. So... So I, I, I got X running. So if you want, to, you're going to see the most 90s thing here when XDM starts up. Assuming it does start up, but it should. Yep, there it goes. It is completely disco. Just look at that. Look how beautiful that is. And the backspace key is not working. I, hold on, I, I, I gotta show this. I, I gotta show this on stream. Let me make sure the camera's pointed at it. So if I point it at the keyboard so you can see it, I hit backspace, it no backspace. I press control H, it backspaces. I remember this problem back in the day and I don't remember how you fix it. It is a problem in X org. So um I I I have this distinct feeling I could ask the chat for help, but I don't think anyone will actually know how to fix it. So um I I like the fact that the XDM and my Cosair keyboard are basically the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, and ever and anyone else, welcome to XV. <laughs> Sorry.
I just find it funny that we come that far. And <laughs> is the backspace key even working at all? Let me open next term. No, the backspace key is not, in fact, working at all. I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> okay, let me open X. I think I can open XF86 app because I would like a backspace key. Um, let's see here. It appears you're currently running under X. Uh, I just want to make some adjustments. Uh, no, I got I got to be root. So password. Okay, this is a reconfiguration. Uh, invalid MIT magic cookie. Okay, all right. There's an easy way to fix that. It's called X off minus. Oh, okay. Does that really not work? Does that really not work? Is it plus? No, it isn't. Okay. Fine. We'll do it this way. Uh, sudo password. Uh, in the, I think if I just go into XDM, XDM stop, password, if I go XF86 setup, yes, I want to use defaults. I just want to see what the options are because I know what's missing. I just don't remember the name of it. Oh, it's X um, X host. No, this isn't GNOME. GNOME is available for this version of Debian as an a 1.0 um, uh, beta. And just as a note, most ThinkPads, um, okay, I just noticed that X is not even able to load. So, all right, let's 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 look in the man page. I'm, I'm not. <sighs> this is fine. You know, hold on. This has got to be a common enough problem that if I load up Google, if I load up Google, XF86 config, control H backspace not working. So I basically need an article from the early 90s. So we're probably in the right area here. So this talks about KDB changes using XNOMAD or uh, mod map. Okay. So if you have the KDB extensions. Okay, so apparently I just need to enable this and it works. All right, let's let's see here. A6. Hmm. Uh, I just realized I'm probably not showing the screen. So droid cam. Search. Uh, X I don't even know if it's in the standard install. I mean, it probably is. I hope. <sighs> All right. See, so the problem is I didn't make a standard config, so uh, my bad. All right, let's see here. Here we go. So we need to go into XF86 config. I'm just going to note that, like I said, I don't expect, you know, I question how, like, any normal user could have potentially managed to can set this up. Let's see here. So, there we go. So, that was XKD disable, which definitely is not right. I think all I got to do is... Let's just come in and out these lines. Let me see here. So if I do that and I do start X. Mouse works. Do I have a working terminal? Okay, I've got a working terminal. I have debugged an X issue. 
I have debugged the X issue. All right, so let's log out. And then let's log back in, back in as a non-root user. Because there's a lot of things to see. Now, now that we've got it working, there's a lot of things that we can actually see here. So... Okay, let that come back up. Okay, cool. So, welcome to the world of working X. So, this so right now we are using XMVM uh, 95 because that's what we chose as the default. We have all these different defaults installed. We can go to IceVM. We can install, we can go to Open Look. We've got Window Maker. We've got Window Maker 2. We've got a lot of modules and we have defaults that don't work. Like Netscape is not installed. So you press it and nothing happens. Because of course nothing happens. And the installed software load is kind of low. Although I, I like the large collection of Emacs. Like I said, 1920 X Emacs and one or two other versions got deleted along the way. And this, this what I should note is what was installed for a quote unquote desktop user. So um, we will switch to Window Maker because I love Window Maker, but I'm just give, we're just going to do the quick rundown here. Uh, and then we get all these network applications. I mean, there's a lot of network applications and about half of them are X clients. I mean, they're just, it just keeps going. We also have Scheme installed by default, lots of shells. I legitimately don't know if sound works. Let me open X Mixer. Does it even... This was also even a thing at this point. I don't think also was a thing at this point. I think this was still OSS. Okay. Yeah, I want to say at this point it was still... Okay, so I don't have sound support. I could probably fix it. But we're pushing it. We're pushing it really hard. Oh, you want me to fire up GIMP? I can fire fire up GIMP. We're we're gonna we're gonna go with old school GIMP here. Let's see here. So that would be under graphics. Apparently GIMP is not actually installed. Oh no, hold on, hold on. Uh it's an installation lizard. You can really see how much they knocked off from Windows ninety five. So, yeah, okay, just do install. User installation complete. Man, this is old school. Man, this is back when GIMP had a usable UI. And there we have it. Let me see if I can find an image file to test it on. Or actually, no. You know what we can do? I know what we can do. Bum, 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 bum. Come on. There we go. Guys, it's Mozilla back when it was just Netscape Navigator. Remember this? But in fact, we can actually we can actually do some internet surfing on it. If I go to uh, gopher.floodgap.com, this should actually load. Or uh, it will load once I set up the terminal. Once I set up Xterm. 
let me open a X term console. Because when I rebooted, I lost the network config. Yeah, and I, I could install a DHCP client, but I never found one that works with this system. I have config, why did it, oh, net mask. Okay. All right, let's see if that actually works. Let's clear out that error page. It's fine. That's fine. Hmm. Let me try reload, stop. Probably is having issues for probably justifiable reasons. I never actually tried to use the web browser when I had this installed earlier. But I just want people to think of what it took to get this far. And everything in this laptop is supported. Uh, you want me to run a uname A? I can do a uname A. So it's Linux 2.2. Um, I can get more information than that. All right, I thought. Yeah, it's Linux 2.2. This is a 586 system. Um, the kernel was built in 1990. There's not much more else to say. <sighs> I could throw this network step in a shell script, and I probably should. In fact, I'm going to. I can just throw it in RC local. Oh no, I remember why I don't do it on this system because this system doesn't have RC local. It's got a. Do I even have? Yeah, I don't even have an RC file. That came later. Um, let me open. I'm going to open NetHack. One one step at do I have Xnet hack? Why is it saying net hack command not found? Also, I got a network error. Oh hold on, no, it's because I'm root. Xnet hack. There we go. There we go. Net hack. With and you know, we're going with proper curse net hack. We're going with um we're going with tiles. Uh, Captain Falcon, I don't know if you're telling me that I need a new CMOS battery. The CMOS battery on this system is fine. Okay. Um, all right. Before, before we get any deeper into this, let me open a new terminal. Uh, you know, I, I, I actually I want a more usable environment. So I feel like I'm, I'm feeling in a window maker kind of mood. So give it a moment. Ah, there we go. Remember when you used to be able to do that and just change your window manager just whenever you felt like it? So if I go to gopher.floodgap.com. Yeah, it's something here it, it doesn't like. Does it, If I go to, if I try the gopher version of this, All right, let, let's take a look at Mozilla settings. Wow, it's for this version of Mozilla is really unstable. Look at the amount of warnings it is throwing out. So if I go to advanced, it might be trying to use a proxy or it might just be broken. I'm inclined to think this version of Mozilla which is what they shipped in the box is entirely broken. Because, I mean, look at the number of errors it's throwing up. All right, let me just close and restart it. All right, uh, NetHack, you need to go away for a bit. So, I really do like Next Step, like I always have. In fact, I would love to do a video on Next Step. Um, 
Uh, Anima was installed. But before we do anything, I, I want to see how broken is broken. Like, if I click history... Yeah, I see, it just gets upset. I don't even know if it's trying to talk to the network. Let me see here. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, see, it's not even getting that far. Let me see if Mosaic is available. You go into apps. I thought Anima did get installed, but I could be. Oh, yeah, Anima, it did get installed. I for completely forgot that this used to be a web browser. I also forgot that that used to be the default behavior when you double click on the bar. And it's animated. I've actually done quite a bit with OpenStep in the past. So let's, let's see. I'm trying to remember how you actually go somewhere. Let's, let's see here. Transform, view, links. Because you couldn't just... I remember this being a derivative. Let's see here. Uh, flood gap. No. Gopher, flood gap. Why is it saying it? All right, let's just try a gopher then. Because that should not be down. All right. Obviously, trying to use the internet on this thing is not exactly. Let's see here. Gopher flood gap. Dot com. Okay, so maybe was it dot? Let me check it on the other thing. No, it's up and running on the other. Oh, I know it's wrong. I know. I know it broke. I probably lost. Why did I open this in Emacs? No, that is the correct name server. See now, now that's all working. I, uh, all right, I, I'm going to have to take a five minute break here because I think my sanity is starting to drip out my brain. Yeah, no, I sit. Um, the thing is that I actually checked. Um, Flood gap is specifically something that I know works with old web browsers. Like, I, I know for a fact that it will. Because it's a gopher website. It's not even a regular website. But I think what's happening is that this is trying to open Mozilla.org. It's getting confused and the whole thing is just breaking. So let me go into Navigator. Let me just change its default homepage to... I have this distinct feeling it's not going to make a difference, but, you know, you never know unless you try. All right. Last, this is my last try with this because I doing net surfing with these old versions is like, yeah. And I, I need to ca just catch up with chat and see what you guys are saying. I'm sorry. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting tunnel visioned. All right, and then Netscape error. Hey, okay, look, there we go. Okay, so the problem was it was trying to talk to Mozilla.org and getting very unhappy about it. But uh, we can now access Gopher Space. Like, if we want to go and check... Like, if I wanted to check out Wiki... the uh, There is a Wikipedia Gopher um, thing... Ooh. Sorry, my back just popped. Yeah, all right. Let me let me just take a moment. 
to recompose myself and catch up with chat. So the reason uh, I'm trying, let me bring this up on the main monitor so you can see what I was trying to do. So go for flood gap, go for. Um, I know the guy who runs this. His name is Cameron Frazier. He basically keeps old web protocols alive, including Gopher. And Gopher was a predecessor to HTTP and is basically unchanged. It's available as both. He runs a Gopher proxy that lets modern br browsers use Gopher, as well as have a legacy Gopher. And this basically became the new Gopher root menu. Like, I'll drop a link to this in the chat for people to check out. Um, I just lost the chat. There we go. So, okay, so that's apparently what I did is I, I just was typing it wrong. Okay. The, uh, the Sandy meter just needs a five-minute break to recover itself. So, we got X working. We're using Window Maker, which of course was the best of the old school, um, best of the old school window managers, and that is a hill I will die on. I used to, I've ran a Gopher server from scratch. It's it's actually a really simple protocol. Um, yeah, okay. Most web browsers of the era supported Gopher natively. Netscape supported it. Internet Explorer supported it. Mosaic, to my knowledge, supported it, although I could be misremembering. Yeah, Niazid, I know for a fact that you were... Uh, um, <laughs> uh, Kovaz, I, I got a little hyper-focused on my... Window. The way the the modders turn is I have to turn and face to look at the chat, and I don't have a moderator to smack me upside the head that when I'm being stupid. So it's fine. This is fine um, because there was a request for it. We are going to play a little. We're just going to play a little bit of NetHack. I've actually beaten NetHack. Um, like I've I've actually gone the amulet. Uh, we're just going to close Netscape. Close Netscape. Bring NetHack back up. You know what? I think we're going to need to change Windows Managers again. This game does not work well, so... Ah. It... I, I, I'm going to say that this feels... The, the, the sun feels right for this. I do need to restart it though. Okay, so if I, all right, that gets that there. Where's the other, where's the character creation window? There it is, player selection. What role should we be for NetHack? Uh, I don't know how to explain, uh, how to pronounce it properly. Uh, Kovacs, I don't know. So, very old Internet Explorers. Microsoft licensed um, an uh, HTML engine from Spyglass Technologies. Spyglass basically had a slightly modified version of Mosaic. So, yes, early Internet Explorer was essentially Mosaic with Microsoft extensions. So, that's the, um, that's the long thing. Okay, so apparently people want me to play Tourist. Okay. It is written in the Book of the Lady. After the creation, the cruel god Moloch rebelled against the authority of Marduk, the creator. Moloch uh, stole from Marduk the most powerful artifact of the gods, the Amulet of Yendor, and he hid it in the dark cavities of uh, Jehenemin, the underworld, where he now lurks and bides his time. You are a blah, blah, blah. Okay, so basically basically the, the god stuff got stolen. It's up to you to get it back. Where's the button to actually start the game? And God, why am I really going to play this with tiles? Okay, I guess I'm really going to play this with tiles. How about let's let's take a look. Um, 
first I need to figure out how to resize this because this is a little bit too big. Uh, all right. We started in a dark room. And we have to futz the options. Okay, hold on. No. Options. Uh, numpad is false. I mean, we could we could definitely. Okay, so my inventory. All right, I'm already getting annoyed. <clears throat> I've had tiles mode enabled for about three seconds. And I'm already getting annoyed by it. So we're going to save and go to console mode, just for my sanity. Net hack. I mean, if people really want to see me do a net hack, let's play. We can do a net hack. Let's play. So. But I don't know how many people really watch me to play games. So we have a couple of things we can do here. We could try and track down a legacy version of Star Office. I don't know if I could find it. Let's see here. Let's, let's get on the old desktop. Star Office 5 personal download. So this is Star Office 5.2 for Solaris, Solaris, Linux. So, yeah, okay, so that is, in fact, Star Office. All screenshots taken from Windows Me. I would prefer the actual distributed, distributed version of star office because there was a free download of it or uh, okay all right trying probably trying to find a commercial version of star office is easier said than done or i should say the free version of star office uh oh wow hold on the uh, stream stream is catching up to reality. So yeah so to give you the history here, open off so Sun was at one point very involved with Linux or not Linux, uh Unix as a whole and had a lot of things. They bought Star Office from another company and they sold it as a full IDE for Solaris, and they made it available for Linux and Windows. They then converted Star Office to Open Office, which was had some features removed, and then Star and then Open Office became OpenOffice.org, which became LibreOffice, and I don't even know what it is right now. <sighs> Wow, okay. We've been going, wow, we've actually been going for three hours. So, which is a little insane. Star Office 5 is on WinWord PC. Um, I could grab it. Um, the, I'm hesitant to download it on stream because God knows I could just see Google getting upset for me downloading something that was legal to download back in the day. So, yeah. Um, I am open to other ideas of what to do with this right now. Do we want... We could try installing upgrades and see how many more versions of... Um, uh, how many more versions we could actually get through. And I just realized that we are really oversaturated here. Okay, so that should look a little better. Like, we could see if we could actually upgrade through a few more releases of Debian, or we could save it for a another day. I think I got to take a five minute break. I, I've got. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, Gamer95, I don't have an IBM T53. I used to have a T40 for quite a long time. This is a ThinkPad 380D. 
Hold on. What sound issue? You would love to see newer Debians on this PC. So if we... We only have 100 megabytes available in total. So you know what? Let's first get rid of something we don't need. Let's get rid of all the Emacs. I, I, I'm just curious. If I remove everything Emacs related from this machine... I gain back 50 megabytes. Uh, let's take a look. What else do we have that we just don't need? Uh, no, no, no. We don't have enough disk space to upgrade. I think that's really what the boil, the uh, the takeaway from this should be. Okay, and I'm just remembering why I don't use Open Look or I never liked Open Look. Because it's got this weird menu system that I never could get the hang of. You basically have to open on the left hand side because they fly out with such. Yeah, we would have to free up a lot more disk space to be able to upgrade. But we could do it. Hmm. Let me think let me think about this. If I did a bare minimum Debian install, I could almost certainly get it to work. But a bare minimum Debian install is not a very interesting thing to upgrade. Oh, um, okay. Sound support on the ThinkPad. Okay. I don't even know if the Crystal Audio device is supported in this version. I could, We could take a look. We could, in fact, look into this. So, the sound card on the ThinkPad. Let me see here. Uh, let me switch the view so you can see what I'm looking at. So, this is a ThinkPad 3D. I'm pretty... Uh, let's see here. ThinkPad 3D ThinkWiki. So the audio, yeah, so it's a crystal sound. It's an Ulsa device. Oh, no, it's a Circus Logic audio controller. I was wrong about that. So when was this device supported? When was this added to Linux? Because at this point, it would be open sound system. It also would not have been a thing at this point. Hmm. I don't remember OSS at all. I, I don't ever think I got sound working on this older version of Linux. Wrong channel. So, yeah, I, I know it can play back MP3s, but I think that's entirely dependent on the... Um, you, you can only play back MP3s if your audio actually supports it. Or your... your um, you know what? Hold on. Hold on. I have a book. Like, I have an honest-to-goodness bo book about this version of Debian. So... When in doubt... Let's read the manual. And I apologize, my desk is a little messy. So if we, so if we take a look at the, all right, let's go to the table of contents. I just realized we lost the background music at some point. So let's see here. Something called Sunshine. That sounds like it'd be nice. All right. So let's look, let, let's read the fine manual. So chapter one is installing X using X. 
playing Linux games, setting up Linux-based LAN. I'm guessing this manual has nothing to do with sound support, but let's skip ahead. Let's go to the back. All right, let's let's take a look. Let me put the camera in a better position so you can actually see me RTFMing. Let's see here. So Q talks about setting up RAID. Servers shell SNES 95. It actually talks about Super Nintendo emulation. But I don't see anything related to sound. Star Office. No. Ah, here we go. Sound cards, page 22. The make and model of, well, that that's really useful. It just tells you to write down the name and model of what it says in device properties. So, okay. All right, uh, Roger, I hope you have a wonderful day. But I think I'm going to be pretty close to widening down the stream. I'm kind of dead. I, th I think just thing with so many X issues was... Um, exciting to say the least but i would be definitely open to having future streams in the future future streams in the future okay yeah no now now i know i'm effectively fried but yeah there's no mention of open sound system in here there's really nothing talking about audio let's look under a but i'm not seeing it so I'm thinking this entire book has literally nothing to tell me about audio whatsoever. And I'm not even sure where I could find the correct documentation. So let me find a good stream to raid. Um, there is a channel you guys should subscribe to if you enjoy tech streams. Uh, on YouTube or Twitch, and that's DEFCON 201, which is a group that I am actively involved in, and um, they have a meeting tonight at 6 p.m. I don't think I can set the raid to them, but this is a channel you should subscribe to. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. You know, I can look at that. We, we can look at this sound. You know, before we shut it down, let's take a look at the sound how-to from the Linux documentation project. Let's see here. Wait, $50 well spent? Sound how-to Linux documentation project. How old is this document? It's seven years ago. Let me find the original one. All right, do I? Yep, yeah. all right. Oh, this is looking horrifying. Okay, so here's the list. So this is a lot newer because this is for kernel 244. So there is actually a lot of change from this and what we currently have. Because we're a 2-2 kernel, but maybe there's something useful in here. Because I see the crystal sound devices here. So, but like I said, a lot of it talks about the open sound system. And then this talks about ALSA. But ALSA was not, that's right, ALSA was not part of the kernel standard really until 2-6. So... Right, so this is not a PCI ThinkPad, so we probably need to go and get the PMP settings. So let's log in under root. And there's a pretty good chance that I am just going to have to go 
and configure us. Let's see here. All right. Okay. Let, let me see here. Before let, let let's see if we can actually get some sound out of this thing. So let's put the droid cam back on. I've been inspired to go a little bit longer with this. So if we go to X term, and let me make sure this is, let me make sure I've got the voice chat up. So okay. Um. So, uh, my time zone is Eastern. Yeah, my time zone is Eastern e Eastern Standard Time right now. So. We probably will have to rebuild the kernel, but let's see what we've got. So if I MS mod, so let me do ISA PNP, and that does absolutely nothing. So let's just see if we've got a module, because this is a pretty standard thing. So it would be CS something. All right, I need a terminal that doesn't completely suck. Let's see here. You know, there's this very good chance that Linux, that Debian did not ship with sound drivers. I just realized that that is like completely, completely something that would be the case here. So kernel 2.2. Two. Because back in these days, it was generally recommended that you recompile your own kernel after getting the system installed. So kernel source 221. And this should come with a basic config file that we can take a look at. I may not have the disk space to compile this. So let's let's see if we can free up some disk space because we are probably going to need it. So first let's just get rid of everything Emacs. Right, I can't lock, I can't actually do that while we're downloading because locky locky. Yeah, so we probably have to rebuild the kernel. We probably have to see if there's a crystal audio device in this version. My guess is there isn't, but and if there isn't, then it's not going to work. But definitely can check it with later ones. Yeah, I, I remember pretty clearly offhand now that the standard Linux of this era, it was you install and then um, you install and then um, basically basically completely fail to finish your sentence. I, obviously, I am running out of spoons. Um you would install with a basic generic kernel. You would take the existing kernel. You would run X menu config because basically if you could get X working, you have reached usable Linux status. And now you just have to do final configuration and then you're all set to go. So this, this basically reminds me, um, all things considered, this sound card I vaguely remember has problems with Sound Blaster compatibility. You need a TSR loaded to make that work. And that's my back going pop. I am really hoping they included a sample.config file. Like, I'm really hoping they did. Okay, so it's unpacking kernel source, but we could definitely try upgrading through. Yeah, you know, it's that feels like a good one year anniversary stream, because my one year the 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 first video I released was at the beginning of May, so I'm basically been on YouTube for about ten months now. So I'm kind of liking doing that as a one-year anniversary thing. Uh, for this version, I would think that they would include it in kernel source because I remember there being specific Debian documentation on how to do this. 
So if there is a dot config, great. If not, well, all right. So kernel source. Did it really just leave a tarball? Like, is that all? Okay, let, let, we need we need some disk space back. So let's get rid of stuff that we're not using. And I, I almost feel like the rotary hard drive in here is going, oh my god, kill me. So let's unpack kernel source tree. That's a really you know that kernel source is several versions out of date because. This is a dot twelve kernel. Hold on. Did I did I was there another kernel source package I missed? And I'm just realizing there probably was. Yeah, no, there was actually quite a few. But not the most recent one. Although interestingly, you can get the source code to pine. That's probably the only way they could legally distribute it. But yeah, okay, let's let's untar this. Let's just take we're just gonna take a quick peek, but I'm pretty sure I would have to download the Linux kernel from kernel.org and then go forward. Yeah. I remember, I remember pretty clearly I had to go to kernel.org to get the kernel source. It, it wasn't kept up to date in the Debian archive. Uh, there's also known that some of the early Debian archive stuff have missing packages or corruption. So taking that all into account, I am really not optimistic about this. Like... We'll look in the sound driver and see if we even have the right one. So, at this point, at, at, at a later point, yes, um, Linux, uh, Debian was much better about this. But these were the early days of Debian. The build the infrastructure was pretty much brand spanking new. A lot of the kernels and binaries were hand rolled. So, there's that. Although amazingly, this has an IPv6 stack, which makes me wonder if I installed an IPv6 enabled kernel, if it would actually work. But that's probably a bad idea because then you could all attack, all get this machine's IP address from it. So, okay, if we take a look here, I see a crystal audio file. So it's a CS twenty uh forty two thirty two. And what did I say was in this machine? What's in this machine is a CS forty two thirty six. So something close, but not quite. Okay, I have my doubts that this will work because I'm looking at the driver right now. Oh no, maybe maybe it will work. Maybe it's all one common file. For, uh, forty-two three six. Okay, so it is actually supported. But we'd have to get a PNP config set up to initialize some boards, which in fact I know you do need. Because I. Let me see here. Is, was this built as a module? No. Yeah, okay, so this is part of Open Sound System 3. So we could get working sound on this ThinkPad. And this version of the driver, I'm already seeing kludges here. 
Yeah, you'd have to set up I ISA PNP. I I don't I don't think I can go down this road. No, because IPv6 you'd have public um public IPs. So pretty much once again, I was going to call it quits and then I failed to call it quits. I um I legitimately failed to call it quits. I I think at this point we could try and get working audio. But the fact of the matter is we've got less than 100 megabytes of free disk space. And I just wanted to do this as kind of a brief tour of the system. Um, I probably would need to go through and make a new video with re-editing it if I really wanted to cover this properly. Like, I don't think I'll make a real-time stream highlights video, but I could. And we're coming up on the four-hour mark. So... Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking this is a good stopping point. Um, before I shut it down, though, where what other topics would people like to see me cover in the future? Because let's let's turn let's turn the camera towards me. Because I'm going to talk with you guys for now. So I kind of want to do more live streams in the future, but. There's not a lot of people that do retro tech live streams, so I don't have a lot of context of what you guys want to see. Um, you know, I do a variety of hardware. I can do software. I can actually, you know, what might not be a bad project. Um, I finally got replacement cables to make my Commodore One Twenty Eight actually usable because, um. And I have to solder a Pi fifteen forty one board for it at some point. I'm not very good at soldering. Um, I recently had to do a capacitor replace, so you guys are gonna get a little bit of a sneak preview of an upcoming video. So this is the main board out of um, a compact portable one. And when I got this board and the rest of the portable, I know at least one capacitor was failed. So hopefully you can see this on camera. Um, but C81 here, C81 here was a dead short to ground and it's directly connected to the negative 5 volt pin uh sorry negative 12 volt pin that's on this um board so i did recap it i uh i actually have to clean the flux off i couldn't find a brush to do so so i bought a toothbrush yesterday to get the flux off this board but i never i i'm not actually very good at soldering i don't do hardware and okay let's be a little less cockeyed i don't do hardware as a matter of course but i'm starting to go down that road so i could do the pi 1541 um build as a stream i might do it as a video or i might do both i could solder it all together as a stream and test it and then do a video talking about it I guess we'll see. I, I got to decide what I'm going to do with this stream and its highlight reel. So I'm open to suggestions. I, I'm, I, I have a lot of plans for that portable one if I can get it working. Um, the problem, Lone Tech, is that the um, PSU on that particular board was has short detection. So with negative 12 volts being a dead short to ground, it wasn't even going to turn on. As it turns out, the PS board, the PSU board is actually f completely effed up to the point that I'm going to replace it instead of even trying to repair it. But to even test it properly, I had to remove the short. And annoyingly, this system does not even have a serial core ARD. It's something I actually am going to have to find an ISO serial, serial card if I want to use a mouse with it. Um, any 
plans to dump CD-ROM's redump level. What what is CD-ROM redump level? I've never actually heard of this before. To the Googles. So when I when I search CD-ROM redump, I get a whole bunch of Mega CD stuff. So I it's a mystery. I don't know. There, there's a quite a few other things I'd love to cover in the future, and I'm really not sure how I will. But I think we're at the point that I'm going to shut the stream down for the day. Um, I am pretty much dead on my feet. So um, Lone's Tech, if someone wants to send me a bus mouse, I'll be glad to use it. I have a serial mouse, and a serial port is more useful than a bus mouse port, especially when you only have five expansion cards. But I'm going to pull the plug. I don't have anyone for us to raid. I would love to have someone for us to raid, but I don't. So I guess um, uh, Levinsky Levo, uh, Levovo. Wow, holy cow. I know I butchered that. I apologize. It's been a lot of fun, guys. If you want another channel to check out, I recommend checking out DEFCON 201. Um, I'll drop their link back on the channel in a moment. And, um, I do occasionally stream on their channel in addition. So, in, I guess this is End Commander signing off, wishing you all a pleasant day. Bye-bye.